welcome to LiggyCast. This is the Giant Bomb Community's Guild Wars 2 podcast for the week of August 11th. I'm your host, Soccer Fest Cynic, and joining me today is returning for a week of hiatus. Rosson, how are you going? Hi. I'm, I'm okay. I am, <laughs> I am okay. You know, what do we do without you? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like without me, you would, you would be too optimistic about things like life. <laughs> I could agree with that. And, that's, probably, that's, probably, would, that's probably right. You would have too much hope. I, maybe. I, I, I guess. Well, if, if, if you haven't figured out by that, Durin is also here. Hello, Durin. I am here. I I apologize for everybody live that this is late, but impromptu ne- nephew birthday party so oh you, you know. you're gonna hook me up with those uh did photos you, that's did you get really cake? creepy <laughs> <laughs> i did get cake yes i got i got cake what kind oh. of cake was it It was spongebob cake oh, oh that's, that is, so, that ew, you ate a sponge <laughs> yes i ate a sponge he ate a delicious. spongebob and now my mouth is very well clean. what flavor do you make a spongebob cake well the spongebob was the top Lemon? the cake was just like a it was just a white cake Oh, okay. okay, so they didn't even go through with it. They just like you know had a <laughs> half-ass SpongeBob cake. Was it at least a sponge cake? No, it was not sponge cake. That would have made it. Okay. Well, who the hell's gonna have sponge cake for their birthday? That's <laughs> no, a really say, terrible birthday cake. I will it's say, a SpongeBob cake. We're yeah. gonna we're, we're, we're gonna one up them next weekend with our son's birthday because we're doing. <laughs> oh God, we're doing Cookie Monster <laughs> uh, uh, cupcakes, and we're gonna what? slice a, 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 a sl- slice out of it for the mouth Wha- and stick cookies in there. Whoa. Okay, oh, all right, I was gonna say that's pretty badass. I'm on board. Should, you need to have Cookie Monster cookies. Yeah, no, totally. No, no, but cookies this are is, this is be better. This is like yeah. two okay. in one. Because this actually that does the monster with blue part sprinkles as well. for his fur. That's pretty oh, great. That, that does. That is that is pretty bad. Are you making these yourselves, or are yes. you getting them commissioned? No, we're making them. Okay, that sounds oh, good. Man. That's a that sounds like effort. How many are you making? How many do you uh, make for twenty four? Oh man, that's a lot. That's how many days there are in a year, or. No. Yes, that is oh, exactly you, how many days are What the year. fuck? <laughs> Canadian what years are much shorter than everybody else's years. <laughs> I meant no, to say that's, that's how that many hours how, there are in a day. I was going to know. <laughs> that, that's just how many days of sunlight he gets every year. <laughs> also, yeah, Shin Boy, did, Shin Boy did point out, uh, Cynic, I'm pretty sure you almost said July. I, I almost said July. That's true. Uh, Nubaram is also here with us today. I yeah, also... I I went to an imaginary birthday party for my imaginary nephew, and we had imaginary cake as well. Was it sponge cake? No, it was. It wasn't cake. It, was, <laughs> it could have been. Any, it could have been whatever cake. It you wasn't wanted a it to real be, birthday party, and it wasn't sponge cake. <laughs> Wait, so you imagined? You imagined you going to a fake birthday party <laughs> for a little kid, no less, mind you. Mind you. This is Aww. this is the creepiness of the body's noob. <laughs> He imagined oh. himself going to a little child's birthday party. You have the party. worst imagination ever. <laughs> well, like, what the fuck? That's as far as my imagination goes. <laughs> it just, it I imagine you going. Any level. <laughs> imagine there's like dinosaurs. I can or imagine at the myself imagining party. about going to an imaginary birthday party. Well, that's. Have you ever seen Inception? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, we made the podcast all negative, and it was only just me. <laughs> oh, fuck. No, no, noob, you're confusing negative with just creepy. <laughs> <laughs> or just terrible. I don't know. Anyway. Uh. Oh, fuck. <sighs> How long have we been recording? <laughs> anyway. 17 minutes. Noob Rama. That, that is at least 10 minutes of solid gold. Week? <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely. solid SpongeBob kick gold. Cause oh SpongeBob's god, what do you mean yellow. this week, noob? Let's um, do this. Well, so at the beginning of the week, um, what did I do at the beginning? Of the week? Really? Um, oh, okay. I do this every week, it's oh, not like it's a surprise. I played, I played, that I played the doing. original Guild Wars, right? And um, oh this wow, is, yeah. So I went, to, I went back to the original Guild Wars because like Shin Boy was talking about um, building up his Hall of Monuments. I'm like, oh, I should probably do that. I only need one more point. And then I came to the bleak realization that I have no money on the character and I had no, nothing to sell. <laughs> you had like eight and I'm like, And I was thinking of just pawning everything I had, you know, getting like 550 gold pieces here and there. And then I suddenly get a message from So, So from you guys someone. remember, real quickly, you guys remember back when we first started this <laughs> podcast, when we did plugs, noobs plugs yeah. were always, hey, hop on the Guild Wars 1 and give my character some stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> free PLS. Out somebody free was listening. PLS. And, and, and I got a, and, and a couple of minutes into the game, I got a PM saying like, "Hey, I I listened to the Lincoln cast, 
that's, and then inc- that's, inc- and then that's crazy. That is incredible. And I got and I got three common minis, and that was amazing. And so I'd like to give a shout out to Tank from the Ashford Cartel. I love you. Please marry me. And uh, I also want to yeah. say to our other listeners to not and repeat what Tank did. Don't <laughs> give new free stuff. I, I did get free stuff from Shinboy too. Tarkin, well. Tarkin, Tarkin and Shinboy gave me also free stuff. Yeah, I'm a girl on the internet. Well, Tarkin's and I really have nice. Free stuff. Yeah, Tarkin, Tarkin and I have free stuff for you, noob. So, yeah, I messaged Wait, them. Who the fuck was that? Palace. Who is that? That was, that was, that was, that was me. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god. Oh god. I'm do doing again. Going with this I, I'm weirdly do aroused. <laughs> do, do the rest of this podcast in that voice. That was okay. terrifying. Oh god, no. I've also been I've also been playing Stalker. I, we said we needed a female on this podcast, so you know. That's I'm true. Just, wait, mm. are, were you playing Stalker or were you just being a Stalker? <laughs> well, I, I consider it I think it's a, a game. A mind game. It's, like it's a, game a psychological game. Stalking. It's like chess. You gotta you gotta avoid being you know seen. And uh, it's no, I was playing I was <laughs> playing Stalker or Shadow of Chernobyl or not precious Shadow. Precious Tony Clinton. Did you get Did you yeah, get binoculars? Like as the moment you order binoculars no, is kind of when you go down the road. <laughs> you were playing no, Clear what? Sky. No, I was I was playing Clear Sky, but I was also playing Call of Pripyat. Oh, okay. And um and, uh, okay. and then video games. Yeah, video games. I video I came games. across I was playing a mod too, and um, basically in this mod I was just trading in a outpost where you normally can't like pull up weapons you know what i'm talking about doing right you can't like bring up your weapon yes or yeah um and then a bunch of bandits came into the building and shot me while i was trading <laughs> this sounds like, like, you just i don't know and then i closed the game <laughs> you didn't open up the like console? are you serious i didn't that save <laughs> that's a good plan oh, you're, you're the that worst. reminds me of my skyrim adventures this week oh, oh how, okay God. durin how so do you just, like? How do you? This is your first time playing Skyrim, right? Well, kind of. I played it back. Like I, I got it when it first came out, and I played it back then, and I, I put a fair amount of hours into it, but didn't really make much progress, as most people do in Skyrim. Um, but my progress was even worse. Like I, I was level fourteen when I stopped playing back then. Uh, my one accomplishment was at level three, I did kill a mammoth. Um, <laughs> Whoa! At level three? At level three, I kited that motherfucker. How? Whatever. Yeah, I killed yeah, a mammoth. I kited him level halfway one. across the fucking world, but I killed him. <laughs> oh, I killed the mammoth at level one. Don't, don't they still like uh, bound back to where they where they no. usually roam? No, they didn't no, seem to. As long as I kept after? hitting them. Um, oh, oh yeah, yeah. You kind of have to maintain aggro. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, was this with a bow or the melee weapon? Uh, I think it was with a fire. Okay, yeah, that's easier because fire yeah, is. A- yeah. Anyway, uh, but anyway, um, so I took a long, long break from the game, and then some friends were playing it recently, so I decided to hop in as well. Uh, I got the unofficial patch because I was running into some. Interesting uh, crash errors that didn't actually get fixed with the patch, um, but th- th- so I can't oh. I can't go double bound sword because when oh, I try to summon them, it crashes me. Crash. Yeah. I know, oh, right? I know. Um, and then I've never heard that happening, like a, Beth- a Bethesda game, right? Like they make been really good for me. I don't know. Uh, it's, it's, you really know what? Well. I have really fucking bad luck with Bethesda games. When I bought Fallout Three. Um, the first time I was able to play it through just fine, I just kind of got bored and stopped playing it. When I tried to come back to it See, again, no, you the game have better luck than most people because most people don't even get to that first time because they just well, crash immediately. Yeah, and that's what my mind has started doing now. Is now anytime I try to load the Ouch. game up, it immediately crashes. Um, and yeah, New sad. Vegas, I've run into quite a few bugs, though not nearly as bad as as that. Um, and then of course the issues with Skyrim. Um, I mean, Skyrim has been stable compared to other. Bethesda games, I'll say that. It's a lot better. Yeah, it definitely it's not is. Up on uh, pretty much every podcast we've done for like the last six weeks or so. Wait, I didn't even... Skyrim, we brought it up every time. We did. Really? Every single we time. Have? Yeah. Well, that's just wow. me talking Crazy. about higher rune yeah. Skyrim for myself. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, so I played I played some of that and, <laughs> and ran into bugs like that and then uh, just got frustrated with Lydia because she's fucking retarded. Um, oh, my Lydia just, just got, got hit up by a troll. Home. I level well, no, five or see, something like that. Mine got like she got down by some uh, uh, I forgot what they're called one of the enemies. Um, got down by them and then apparently was in the way of my shout and died. And I, that's I'm the kind better of person, I than can't... your uh, Lydia flying to space <laughs> and never recovering her body and all the gear you gave her. Well, <laughs> no, see, I just uh, what I did is I just um, quick loaded back again and told oh, her. Oh, to coward, home. coward, coward! That's not how you play Sky- or Skyrim. Yeah, that is Skyrim. No, that's, my that's how my Lydia Skyrim. is stuck inside my house. <laughs> in your bed? No, in a pit in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> 
So what you're saying is you're role playing so noob in, in your Skyrim. <laughs> yeah. I don't keep my sure. women in the basement. That's not classy. I'm classy. You behead them and put them on your shelf. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to deny that. Creeper. I won't deny. <laughs> I won't confirm or deny. Rosin, what have you been playing this week? Uh, I well, not a whole lot. I I build a new computer, so I've been yeah you know, getting oh. that all set up. And um, what I how much did you spend on it by the way? It's, it was pretty beast rig. It's pretty much. Uh, it was like fourteen hundred in grand total. Oh man, I wish I I kind of I kind of fourteen hundred Canadian dollars. No, no <laughs> real money. Oh, oh. No, that's, Bitcoin. That was that like five US dollars or something? No, that's like no. With inflation, or uh, because of the recent inflation, it's like three fifty. <laughs> I would. I would. You know what? We right, went to right, Mars. Okay. So fuck all y'all. A- any- anyway, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's valid. I'll give you that. He won. <laughs> he won that did. one. He did win. Um. Anyway, no, no. What I haven't playing a bunch of is the uh, closed beta for Mech Warrior Online. Yeah. How stunned Mech, fucking Mech Warrior, silence. Mech Jesus Warrior Online. You are playing yes. Mech What do you what uh, do you think? Is it Mech Warrior um, 3 or do I not care about it? I I so wouldn't guess. It Mech Warrior 3, but it's it's I what, guess if if, if if it feels like a Mech Warrior game except you can play it online. You could you could play Mech Warrior 4, 4 online, online as well. Yeah. So then yeah. why is this called Mech Warrior Online? Because, because it's, it's a, a because MMO. it's a free to play. Oh, well, it's not yeah. it's not MMO. It's just it's a free to play type thing. It's it's basically like World well, of Mech Tanks. Warrior Three is World free Tank to play. Of mechs, yeah. Okay. A- except okay. except here's the thing though, and this this is this clinches it for me for why I'm actually enjoying it. Uh, there isn't the whole tier thing that World of Tanks had, which was fucking stupid and ruined the goddamn game. <laughs> okay. Uh, so basically, is that, is that the, was that the main thing? You, you what, what's the progression like then? Because World, World Tanks well, is kind the, of about the progression. It's really. it's not really. There's not a whole lot of progression. It's it's more it's more about unlocking new possibilities. So what you're saying a is of, a lot of side grades. What you're saying is it's it's the Guild Wars two to WoW's uh, World of Tanks. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> really we went there already oh. okay sure <laughs> but anyway the game's not even out yet Durin. we don't bring even know back, what's going to be properly on there on release anyway here, here's a winning tip for anyone who plays the game uh teamwork is overpowered <laughs> and i really I like do that. mean like, that like it should be in That's a, a solid game. Tip. like i i mean that too in I played with two other people just last night, and we kept playing for a few hours. We must have won easily, like, nine out of ten of the games we did, just doing the same exact strategy over and over <laughs> and over. Because everyone else was just playing alone. Yeah, basically what happens is everybody is trying to play the game to fight, we're trying to play it to win, and we keep Very winning. Different things. Right. Very yeah. different things. Very different Very yeah. different things. So basically the strategy is... Have your heavy and assault mechs uh, take the sh- the shortest and safest path possible to the cap point. Like, don't charge straight through the center because then you're going to get caught in a fight and you're going to get fucked. Like, you know, go go around a short side path, and then have all the lights and mediums basically work defense and try to slow down the other enemy, the the other the enemy mechs. And it weirdly right. works. What what I want to know is we is it Mech creep. Warrior three? Is it Mech Warrior three? Uh, what what exactly are you trying to look for as far as like Mech Warrior three? Is it Mech Warrior three? <laughs> is it is it Mech Warrior <laughs> three but online? <laughs> it's been so fucking long since I played Mech Warrior three. Yeah, sure. Why not? I don't. Okay. <laughs> it's got I, mechs. Whatever. <laughs> I I was inside a BattleTech mech and I shot at dudes and. Okay, if you shoot their legs, they do not instantly die, so that's oh. different from Mech Warrior 3. <laughs> so, is are uh, there, like, specific areas, like, you can disable, you know... Yeah, it's, it's got locational right. damage, okay, and, good. and if, you know, I blow off your arm, you can't fucking use those weapons. Right. Okay, All so, right. wait, would you... Okay, Mech Warrior Online versus Hawken, go. I, Mech Warrior Online is playable right now. Oh, yeah, so, well, yeah, so what you're saying is when actual... Hawken releases, go to that. <laughs> I I have never I haven't tried Hawken yet, so I don't. It looks I don't know. so okay. good. It looks so yeah, it I, looks so good. Well, but then again, it looks so good from a visual standpoint. But I can't. I I I want to actually play it yeah. first and see. Right. 
yeah, yeah. like I don't from what I saw from the videos of Hawkin, it didn't really look it, it didn't really sell me on the fact that I'm in a big giant robot. Oh, it absolutely did to me. Like that game. I, I, yeah, it did to me. Probably even like, better than I think any Mech Warrior and... game has. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. There's a, breaking there's news. A stress breaking test news. Tomorrow. There's a stress no, wait, test no, tomorrow. Don't. Monthanor, this not... do you have a link? What? what? For oh, a whole Jesus. hour? There's a stress test tomorrow, yeah. That's stupid. That's wow, stupid. That All right, is... so this, this, this is kind of the benefit of having live chat. Um, yeah. I, I think we, it's time we, we can move on from what we've been playing and, and let's just like do a little intro here. We, this episode, I think episode 16, is the first one we're going to be doing live. And what that means is on Duran's Twitch channel, I'm and maybe sweaty. moving to our own for now. Um, but we'll stay on Duran's. But we're doing live broadcasts. So if you want to check us out the episode a, little, a couple of days before it goes up, then we're doing it here. We also have a chat going. A couple of guys in there are pretty cool dudes hanging out. And we kind of chat before and after the show. But mainly it's just a normal LinkyCast episode. So you want to just catch it live on ni- at night. I think it was, what, Friday 9 p.m. Eastern, normal time usually? would be it's uh, normal Friday. In. Yeah, normally Friday at uh, nine yeah, Eastern. Like nine Eastern. I think I had said last time uh, nine thirty Eastern, just because we tend to not start right at nine o'clock, and so I <laughs> and think that's they pretty gave accurate. Us a buffer. Yeah, and that was pretty <laughs> accurate. <laughs> Show up at nine fifteen. Uh, so yeah, nine fifteen Eastern, 9 15. probably. We start thinking about going live at nine. Let's just say that. No, we we Maybe start we'll thinking about what we're going to talk about on the podcast at around <laughs> nine ten. <laughs> so if you want to check us out next week, um, or, or it's more yeah, like, about, are we doing a podcast this week? That's the question Maybe. that comes up. But what the hell are we even going to talk about this week? I don't, I okay, so we can Guild move on to the news segment. Is, uh, and breaking released. news: there's going to be a what a one hour. Looks stress like one test. hour stress test what, tomorrow What time morning. tomorrow? This is it entirely um, useless though. It is uh, 11 a.m. Pacific, Pacific to, to 12, 12 noon, noon Pacific. Pacific. So basically Happy weekend, everyone. Who says that? Happy weekend. So 12 hours? It's so 12 no, hours. No, no, it's one, one hour. hour. 11 oh, a.m. Oh. to noon. The hell is oh. the point of this? Oh, I, I guess I can create PM. characters for now. And that's not even 12. That's, that's 13. Anyway. So one hour stress test. Don't even bother, I guess, is my opinion. Okay, so the news this week... Was going to be, hey, we had two stress tests of which both were completely fucking broken. At least this is the start. Oh, Durin, I was screaming at the beginning of that. I, I, I love that one of the uh, comments on Facebook, uh, the Facebook post for this is, meh, one hour of rubber banding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm with that guy. Yeah, it's like, what, what can you even do in an hour of playing the game? Yeah, absolutely. So like last week... Um, Arena, Arena got on and announced pretty much the day before for both of them two back-to-back stress tests this week, both about four hours long. Um, if you're hearing this on the podcast, obviously this is pretty old news by now, but we may as well just talk about a little a little bit about how, how the stress tests went. Um, it, so the first one, I think we can pretty much summarize it by saying you couldn't log in for the first hour? Oh, you, no, they let you, you log in. in and then they took it away from you. <laughs> yeah, it, was just, it was like it was like an hour of fucking teasing. Like, yep. oh, yeah. you're gonna, oh, no, you know. Oh, you're gonna, no, oh, oh, God. Oh, God. It was oh, the so, oh, I've been in for a minute. I don't want to oh, no, I got I don't want to it, was, it was sort of like going to a strip club, except it's an MMORPG. <laughs> yeah, and the strip, and the strippers took one minute to get done. <laughs> and, they kept, and they kept they kept coming. They just, one came in and then left, and then another one came back. It was terrible. For you were promised a, a, a four-hour lap dance, but really you got one-minute lap dance. She you left. F- you got four and hours. Then, so, and then she mean? sort of guys, came guys, in guys, through the we, door, we and then she went wait. back out. Hang on, hang on. So, things. so would that mean that the second stress test was more like you're going to a strip club, and the, and the stripper would like get her clothes half off and then put them back on, and then get them <laughs> half off and put them back on. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. She, she, she got to almost looking sexy, and then just. Stopped. Why are we talking about this? Let's go back <laughs> on just, topic. Just I just realized we're not for where like we're supposed to be. <laughs> for like what? a minute, and then when she, when suddenly she'd be clothed again and walking out what? the door, and you have what? no what? idea what, what just happened. What did I do? You'd have no idea. <laughs> what did we do? It was what the fucking you started, Ross. Seriously, I, I feel, I feel terrible. You right are disgu- You're a repulsive human being. And so I, yeah, the, a, what we're, what we're basically describing. I'm marking your page. So basically, what we're describing oh. is uh, what happened in the second stress test, which was basically four hours of lag and rubber banding. That I made think the, the game first one was a lot. Pretty worse. much unplayable. Absolutely not. The first one, it was Absolutely. like an hour well, or so. Not, of, not if you were making characters in. the entire time. Well, yeah, okay. <laughs> for, for what you were doing, yes, the first one was worse. 
But for somebody who's actually actively trying to do stuff in there, uh, it, like in the game itself, in our case, it was uh, it structured well. PvP. Uh, the second game was basically, or the second stress test was basically completely pointless because we couldn't actually even test builds in there or anything because we couldn't hit stuff long enough before the lag would kick in and suddenly we were halfway across the room. Yeah, and or dead. Or okay, yeah. suddenly you're surrounded by corpses of your enemies and no idea how you <laughs> killed them, which happened to me once. It was, oh, that was the weird. Oh yeah, my so, god, I went. Hey, super stress tests, test, stress tests. I guess um, it's kind of weird that they they've it's been every stress test has been significantly more broken than yeah, the previous one. Yeah, it's been one. getting worse and worse. Um, yeah. Fuck you, Arena Net. You you wasted an hour of my life. And I spent that I, hour screaming, <laughs> screaming I, at my laptop. I know, I, know I, I will say, I will say uh, they did come in at the very end, about half hour before, let us know that it was getting ready to end um, and did address that they were having Internet issues and that the issue actually affected both Guild Wars 1 and Guild Wars 2. And it was something oh. they were looking into. So, like, they, they knew that uh, this was a, an issue and it wasn't something strictly with the stress test. It was actually on their side. Some, it sounds like something with their Internet connection itself. Um, since it was actually also affecting yeah. Guild Wars 1. Guild Wars 1 so, yeah, was fine. Like I played Guild Wars 1 halfway through the beta test. You did. Or right uh, before and, it. But and Guild Wars we 1 don't know. I, I'd assume that the stuff they put up there is at least semi-true. I doubt they'd just fucking lie to all their stress testers. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, either, either way, I, it's interesting because... So one side of it is that every week we kind of get a hit of Guild Wars 2. And that's kind of keep that's kind of tiding me over between um the the, the last two or three weeks until release, right? Because yeah, absolutely. If, going back to what we've been playing, I haven't been playing much except for Guild Wars 2. I, I do other shit during the week and then the weekends I kind of get a hit of Guild Wars 2, which is kind of cool. But so the stress test, the first stress test this week, you couldn't log in for the first hour and then was fine. The stress the second stress test this week, um, hey, say that three times back to back quickly um you could log in pretty much from the start but it was just completely fucking broken the entire time do you guys think they will do one of these or do you, do you think they even should do another one of these do i think that well, given I, the fact what, that they are doing is, uh, given the fact the that time. They, given the fact that they're doing they're obviously doing one you know tomorrow now we know that um granted it's only an hour one but it's probably something to test to you know test a fix for whatever the fuck broke the last stress test um, I think that absolutely they're going to do at least one more next week. Right. Like, For all we they, know, they're only like using half their servers and they're packing everyone in and really yeah, doing a stress it, test. Yeah. Exactly, and we and we yeah. know that that's something they they kind of had been working on from from beta weekend two. They added a whole bunch of servers in, realized yeah. it was way too many servers. So beta weekend three, they compacted the amount of servers and and upgraded the servers themselves to be able to hold more. And said that going into release, they were actually going to. Uh, their, their their plan was to actually increase the capacity of those servers even more, and it could be that they did good. that and 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 maybe might have pushed it too far for the the hardware they had, and so maybe they're adding more hardware in there, and that's what they're testing is is let's see how many people we can fit on a server at once and not run into these rubber banding issues or the lag issues or login issues or whatever the case might be. Okay, yeah, cause what, what what I was generally assuming was for each of these stress tests, they keep trying to see like how much more and more of a shitty computer they can run it off of. And like, no, judging by, <laughs> your report, judging by your reports, like I was going to guess that it was running off like a 486. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. All right. So what happened was like, I, I played both stress tests, right? With, and the first one I noticed that it reset my graphical settings. So I set them to back to medium. Uh, what was it 650 by 1080 or something like that? That's what I usually run it at to get really good frame rates. Right. Um, the second stress test, because it was the next day, I was like, okay, whatever, I never checked it. At the end of the stress test, I checked my graphical settings, and I was actually running at high settings on 1080p. No, 1200p, and it was buttery smooth on my computer. And this is just like, over a span of three weeks, it went from unplayable at that resolution to awesome at that resolution, and unnoticeable, really, in terms of um, the frame rate difference between... 6, 6, 15, 1650 and 10 or 1920 so it was pretty damn cool so they are definitely doing optimizations there and oh, i'm a pretty old rig yeah, yeah i'm running on my um core i7 920 with a 260 gt a freaking 260 a five-year-old card <laughs> and i'm getting those and it's pretty great um, yeah like i noticed that as well like with mine i'm running the, the same i7 uh, but i'm running a 560 in mine um and <laughs> I was able to max it out entirely and get a solid 40. Which yeah, is, I mean, it's, it's not, pretty sweet. Given that processor, that's not bad. Like, that's not yeah, a super definitely. great processor. I was overclocking it a bit, um, but that might have actually been negatively affecting it. 
so given that they're still <laughs> doing know. the optim- yeah. optimization they're doing. I know that was the case mm-hmm. early on in the beta weekends, so I would yeah. imagine it probably still is. I don't know. But uh, I mean, even then, Especially 40 frames solid is not bad at all. So they're clearly doing a lot of work on that side. Yeah, exactly. And, and But they're also doing the other side of things. Like straight up, I, I did get the feeling that for the first day, they had maybe only one of their many login servers working. And that's why it was completely fucking shit for the first half hour or whatever it was. Because what they did was like you got on and no one could actually get anything done. You just get in for one minute and then get kicked from the server. And then like about halfway, half hour later, with everyone complaining like crazy, they said they were doing a complete server reboot. They rebooted all the servers and then started working relatively fine. And so I kind of get the same idea for the second stress test. They said they had internet issues, but I would be, I would also be unsurprised if they were doing some significant like server cramming, as you guys say, to to kind of. Um, you know, f- f- make sure they're actually doing stress tests. This is a beta. My main issue, though, is if we're going to be getting in and experiencing issues like these, isn't this semi counterproductive? Like, I, how many of these can they actually keep doing before people just start going, fuck it, I'm not even going to bother? Because I have to wake up early to do both of these. And I might well, that's only because you it. live in Australia. Yeah, for I mean, others, it's not that we're hard. Talking, yeah, we're talking about North American servers. So the big, bigger issue is the time frames they tend to do them. It's mostly people like myself who are unemployed or people who are maybe working just, you know, not your standard nine to five jobs are the ones that are actually able to get in and do this. I don't think people are really calling off of work to go and stress test Guild Wars 2. Um, people so, calling off uni, though. People are definitely skipping uni to, to play Guild Wars 2 or college, well, I mean, that's as cool. you would say. <laughs> <laughs> but you people, people are essentially, fucking. and for the UK, for example, pe- people are opening up their evenings. Well, yeah, people are they're doing Friday that, but evenings. what I'm saying is they're not yeah. expecting it. Like, that's not what they're, their, their anticipation is. I mean, they are obviously wanting server load, but um, I think one of the reasons why this last stress test was the first one they've done at the, the late time that they did is because, I mean, they, they need the people in the offices to do that. And when you do a North American uh, late evening po- or podcast, you see where my mind is, um, late evening stress test, uh, you're talking overtime at that point. And yeah, they're, while they're probably they're, working a lot of time anyway. Offices, yeah, while, mm-hmm. while uh, this is happening. They're yeah, working. I mean, exactly. Like there are people actively there working on it on those late hours, and that's I mean, that's gonna cost them even more money on top of the crunch they're already doing leading up to release. So I can see why they're doing the hours they do. It's real unfortunate because I think that that for the cramming that I think they're really doing with these stress tests, it doesn't really uh like you said, it it is in some ways maybe a little counterproductive because they're not getting as many people in the stress test as maybe they could. Um, but yeah. again, I mean, you, ha- you have to look at the cost it, it costs them every time they do one of these. Yeah, and on top of that, I, I think it's very accurate to say that, uh, I think Silent Dante says in chat, uh, the fact, well, our playing experience is second to their doing actual stress tests. Because they're trying to get launch to be as good as it can be. And that's fair enough. Like, if they did those login server tests on that first stress oh, test God. and they got it to that level... It was completely fucking broken, so now they know what their limits yeah. are. Yeah, and I mean, let's, let, we'll be fair here. I mean, like at least a lot of us from the guild, what we were doing during these stress tests wasn't even really playing the game. It was like hopping into the structured PvP and just having fun for four hours. Yeah. So yeah, I, I don't think any. I don't think very many people, at least, um, at least not in our circle, were really actively trying to go and ma- like progress through the game because again, four yes. hours isn't enough time to do that, and that's not really the intention of these stress tests. Exactly. Rosen? Well, I, I was going to say... I, what was I going to say? Oh, God! <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> I, I guess, well, Nubarami, didn't you give your thoughts on that? What Do you think they'll be doing more stress tests? How many stress tests? Because they've already announced a one-hour one for tomorrow, right? Right. Uh, I I'm feel not gonna like, be there what, it's next week, enough. and then next week it's released, right? The day, then week after oh, next week. two weeks, I yeah. remember. Two I weeks. remember now. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, the thing is, they have to get it as perfect as they possibly can for the launch, because at this point, just just the MMO genre in and of itself, like, if you don't have a fucking perfect launch, your game's kind of screwed in a lot of ways. Yes, like, exactly. I, like, I, I, I people are very think... quick to damn a game nowadays. Yeah, I don't I don't think that, that you can ever get back to... Uh, like like Anarchy Online when that game came out at release, it was a complete pile of fucking garbage, <laughs> and and the game suffered for it. And I don't think, I think if a game came out in that kind of state, it would suffer even more now. Because I look at look at you know Star Wars: The Old Republic, a game that launched 
relatively without a whole lot of issues, but even then, like, the imperfections of that game are enough to cause it to, in a lot of people's eyes, be a fucking failure. Including yes. the company's eyes. Yeah, I mean, yeah. absolutely. I mean, WoW, even to, back in those days, that was something they were able to get away with. A game launched fairly broken, um, but, you know, you could get away with it back then. Whereas... The worst part was, the worst part was, WoW's launch, while it was kind of broken, was still better than most MMOs at Well, the time. true, true. I mean, we've come a long way with MMO launches now. I mean, I think Rift was really probably the last surprise that it launched as, as um, unbroken as it was. And kind of beca- I think because of that game, that's become kind of the standard or should be the standard that it should be. launches at. Um, and so that's why, you know, you saw I Star Wars for the most Rift part was a pretty decent one. And that's, so not, that's, a different that, thing. that's not, that's not a bad thing in this market, but that's a whole different story. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, like after that, you know, Star Wars launched fairly, I mean, fairly well. Uh, so, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of bad press from the launch. It was more so the kind of realization that players had that, you know, features were missing and stuff. But And it's I a think, bad game. Yeah. Uh, but I think with Guild Wars 2, like, that's going to be a huge thing is, you know, making sure that these these things that we're noticing in these stress tests, like the login issues, the like the rubber banding issues, like, that absolutely cannot be there at launch if they want this game to succeed. Pretty much. And as I said earlier, people have a... A very, a very interesting attitude nowadays in that, that I think Jesse Cox said it on one of the recent, um, I, I, I hate to bring up the TGS podcast for those guys who don't like those guys, but I do, so fuck you. Um, Jesse Cox said, in his experience, people st- tend to spend about five hours with a game before they really decide whether they want to keep playing it. And I think that's really accurate. I, I think it's incredibly accurate nowadays. Um, the, the, the attention span or just the, the amount of... Um, competition there is for every hour of your day is so high that you really do have to make the best first impression you can er- you can absolutely 100 percent first time for yeah. they, as they have to get in as to work um the stakes or, are, are so fucking high right now like if they if they botch that launch that's in a lot of ways that that'll be it like people will quit and they will probably never come back yeah well and especially and for, it, for a game like guild wars 2 where they can't even rely on early sub fees to kind of you know, help with that. Like they box sales are going to be a huge deal for this game. So they, they need to make sure that they come out of the gate as strong as they can. And, you know, word of mouth spreads. And within that first month, they get a lot of sales. Yeah. And that's what these stress tests are for really. Um, beyond that, I, the, again, there are a bunch of balance changes that I won't go into because they're still in flux. Um, it's kind of sad because I, 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 I wanted to kind of bring it up this week. And so I read through all the all the forums I could pretty much at least one or two pages back last night for every class in, on Guild Wars 2 Guru. Um, it sounds like balance is kind of getting there, but still pretty far behind. The elementalists have been... Uh, and by the way, during we had a discussion after the stress test on, well, two days back, um, saying that the, the elementalists kind of feels like it's doing low damage. Apparently you guys have been nerfed a little bit. Absolutely. And... People people are feeling it. Like the elementalists aren't particularly happy with how their damage availability is. At the yeah, moment, you know, I, I wondered about that because with that second stress test, um, especially like I, I, the first one, I felt real good about the build. I, did that nerf happen between those stress tests? Because that was I did notice I myself know. dying a lot more and and doing a lot less in the second stress test. But Maybe that's hard to say because it, it was just it was just laggy <laughs> as fuck. True, but that that I is think, true too. Yeah, yeah, but I, I think people I didn't experience were any lag. noticing the I don't change. Know what you're talking about? Well, yeah, character creation doesn't lag. Oh, and I disagree. Much I disagree. That first beta weekend. <laughs> Fuck you, reading that. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm never gonna forget this. Um, I'm never gonna forget this. It yeah. So like, soul kill. Elementalists were nerfed. Uh, well, they felt like they were nerfed, and I think they were nerfed, especially looking at the damage you were doing yesterday. Um, yeah. It was last day of my time, anyway. Uh, it, yeah, it just didn't seem quite up to par, and that's that's them. And Elements is about damage, so that they're not particularly happy. Then you have the Mesmers, who their phantasms are now doing like ridiculous damage. I think it was um, Phantasmal Warlock mm-hmm. is doing like yeah, mm-hmm. four thousand a hit, four thousand a hit. Yep, that's that's uh, that's what it's like to be a Mesmer. You're kind of a <laughs> professional dick bag. <laughs> um. Yes, yeah, so they, they, they've I'm been buffed. A <laughs> they've been buffed slightly, but uh, so all the elements of the class are still pretty fucking broken. Um, at least a couple of their weapon sets are pretty unviable, but the staff is just amazing now. But the greatsword's been nerfed pretty hard. Uh, either, either way, like rangers have gotten a nerf. Um, 
which I'm sad about because they, they didn't need it. Uh, but that was because they got that nerf because they were nerfing engineers slightly. It's a hard game. And this is this is kind of why I don't go into like these balance things, at least not before launch. I will after launch. I, 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 I'm certain about that. But stuff like in, adding an internal cooldown to the sigil of... Um, blo- uh, no, sigil of earth you know the one that does bleeding on crits Mm. that has an internal cooldown of two seconds so that's why rangers have been nerfed slightly well pretty significantly engineers have been nerfed slightly and warriors with swords have been nerfed slightly um but either way like again things are in flux it's just sad that a lot of the classes aren't really quite there yet i hope it comes together for release all i know is warriors pretty perfect as it is they can they can leave that alone thank you very much and same with guardian (laughs) those guys seems pretty happy as well um Anyway, so that's that. We can uh, we can kind of say that the stress tests were pretty cool. Will you guys are you guys showing up for if there's another stress test next week? Will you, sh- will you show up for it? I probably will, just in case it turns out good. Durant. Yeah, I, I would love to actually give my uh, great sword warrior a real shot since this last stress test was supposed to be that. And uh, turns out warriors are really hard to play when you're rubber banding constantly. <laughs> Any melee? Oh my god, melee. Anyway, Rosen? I I probably won't be playing these uh, stress tests. Like I kind of with you. I'm kind I'm I'm kind I can see where you're coming from. Even though I'll be there, but that's because well, I'm well, more, freaking uh, fanboy. My problem is more so I'm I'm going to be kind of busy um, at work. Yeah, that's fair enough. And Ro- yeah. and Nubarama? Um, well, I'll be in there in the character creator. If anyone wants to play character creation with me, you know, <laughs> I'm up for it. It's okay. So. Can we can we role play Noob. with each other in the character creator? Noob did this thing where he rocked up to the first of the two stress tests this week, and he spent the entire stress test making characters, but documenting. Er- can you can you can you run me through what you did? <laughs> so, so basically, my mission during the stress test is to create. Well, because I I I just do that because I really don't want to play the game at this point, you know. I'm just going to end up, you know, playing the campaign only to have my character wipe and I'm going to cry. So I don't want to deal with that sort of emotional baggage. So I'm just going to go ahead and spend all of my beta weekends creating characters and templates. So I'll I'll go in the character character creation and then I'll I'll go through each step of character creation and I will screenshot each slider to make the perfect character. This is it, that's that's my goal. That's my oh, goal. No, you, you did so hear crazy. that uh, all the options that are available to us yep. and the stress test and everything is not final and there will be more at yeah. final. So your slider yeah. placements are going to be completely different than the screenshots oh, you took. Oh, God, no! No! No, it's not slider placements. It's well, not slider placements. Ju- they're just adding... Made, maybe options. not slider, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, the, the, I made the my options. perfect sexy options. lady in Guild Wars already. So Noob did that for the entire... Stress test. I did. And I, asked him, lady. I asked him why. Well, I didn't. Like, I didn't. I didn't do that for the entire stress test, mostly because I, I went back to playing other games. But I did spend right. a sizable chunk of that stress. So test. why did you do it? Why, why did you put all that time into <sighs> making characters now as opposed to because because, because, because at that at that time I thought you could you had to make I wanted to make my character as fast as I could so I could reserve the name until Cynic pointed out to me. That once you create a character and you delete it, that name is reserved on your account for 24 hours. So he just. He, this is. I didn't I know I kind of want to bring this up. I, one, to I show how, how freaking dumb Noom is. For, for, I didn't, he's I didn't he's know on a Game Boys 2 podcast. <laughs> I didn't know. And he didn't that. know like, this basic feature. But also. The, the, if, would they never if did Noob that didn't in know the original it, Guild Wars? Like, exactly. If Noob that? doesn't know it, then I guess no, uh, people out there would probably want to know this too. Um. <sighs> So when you make a character in Guild Wars 2, when the game comes out, uh, the guys in the head st- the head starts, so the three head starts, so people who pre purchased like ourselves, um, you can get in immediately and create characters. So obviously, it's, there's going to be a land grab for names, essentially. So Naruto, as a one-word name, is going to be quite <laughs> I plan on I, I plan assume. on making that as an as a, um, investment so I can along in the future, sell it to some poor sap who wants the name Naruto. And I'll say, give me 800 gems and I'll give you the name Naruto. And then I'll delete my character. I would love to, to have you say which names you want to reserve, but it's kind of counterproductive if you want to be there first, huh? Either oh, way. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I have a big um, bag of names. <laughs> so there's going to be a lag. I, s- I spend, you know, an, about 30 minutes before I go to bed just thinking Edward up Cullen. of a popular name. <laughs> Edward Cullen. Bella. Those are all taken, though. 
That's another point. So, what do you mean they're let's, all let's taken? Run people, let's run people through the creation process. So, there's people who have made Gear, Guild Wars One characters, which are two names. Guild Wars One characters will pretty much because uh, anyone who made a Guild Wars char- One character, if they played it this year before July 31st, that is reserved for them uh, for the first couple days of Guild Wars Two's launch. It's the Head Start access couple, days. Uh, I think it's maybe a day on release as well. And and the day and the day of release and yeah. the day of. So. Um, Names, two word names like Edward Cullen and Bellis One are going to be taken because they they were taken in the first Guild Wars. Or Sexy I, Beast. Or oh, sexy I guess you be- can't name your character Sexy Beast. If it's one word, yeah. So Guild no, Wars no, One no, was like two- the word sexy. I think that's you're not allowed to do that. Really? I feel like anyway. I, I don't it doesn't so. matter. No, it doesn't matter. So Guild Wars One guys sure does. do you have the names um, reserved for them for Guild Wars Two? So if you have a Guild Wars char- one character and you played Guild Wars one anytime this year, you'll have that name reserved for the first three days and, and one day on the, the release. Um, so don't worry about those. So, but for anyone who wants to do a single word name, so Guild Wars one could only have multiple words, so two, three, four doesn't matter as long as it's more than one. Guild Wars two allows single word names, so there's gonna be a huge land grab for those. As I said earlier, Naruto. Ichigo. I, I assume there'll be a bunch of anime references thrown in there as well as like other. What Jesus, are these obscure anime Jesus is gonna be a I, I can't wait out. to see the guy who gets Jesus. I'm gonna get Jesus. That'd be so. Oh, Batman. Oh my god. I, will, I have Batman. some. Those are like just ripoff names. I have original names. Oh, I'm gonna get Muhammad and I'm gonna have it be a sexy lady. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So the point we're trying to say here is when you go into Guild Wars 2, if you're worried about your name, your one word name or something like that, or you just couldn't get a name reserved in Guild Wars 1 because you didn't play it this year, um, you can jump in, create a character, right? Um, really like just take all the defaults to completion, put in the name, hit enter, and then delete him again because the name itself is reserved for your account internationally for 24 hours. So no one in the world can take that name if you get it on that first day on the Head Start Access on the day of release. Obviously, the guys in Head Start Access will get... We'll, we'll pretty much have the first pick of names because the release is literally three days later. Um, so if, if you want to get into that, pre purchase the game. And that's I soul guess. crushing considering I spent my t- time organizing these folders. So I'd have <laughs> like the character name as the folder name and then each each image would be like zero one height, zero two it, uh, face... And I went through organizing all of these, and it's and it's all gone. Just, just so you can get a speed creation going. But yeah, I timed it. You don't need it to do that. It took me two minutes and 30 seconds. Don't need to do that. No. <laughs> Fuck you, ArenaNet. Fuck you. Huh? Everything I do, you just have to ruin it. I, I can't have nice <laughs> things because ArenaNet hates my guts or something. I don't know. So I'm going to make a character. Um, there's a couple names I want I, there. I'm going I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make Frack the Police. Um, I don't, you can take that. Really? Well, How about... Yeah, I, uh, I I, I know. Don't exactly say the other ones. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that, that, that's just a PSA for anyone out there who wants to know. So now we can move on to our finally, our main discussion for the week. Um, so Guild Noob Rama, really I, I, lo- I love hearing Noob summarize, any form of summary from Noob, because he's the worst I'm at getting at it some, done. So why would you well, make me do this? Because you're terrible at it. Noob Rama, can you right. t- run us through what our topic is for this week? Um, so our topic for the great debate is what race would you recommend to a person playing Guild Wars to play first? Exactly. I'm sweaty. That was actually the best <laughs> he's ever done that. That's the that's the best he's ever well, done. I, I just can't, can no longer I can't ever just do tell that stories. Again. I, I'm, I'm bad at telling <laughs> stories that aren't creepy. I'm good at telling creepy stories of creepy actions that I did. But anything mm-hmm. outside of that is outside of my oh, comfort zone. Well, you, that's just because those are all the stories you have. <laughs> Wait, Noob, do you also like to just park outside your local Curves franchise and just eat Taco Bell? And <laughs> <stare>? <laughs> um, we do. We don't have that, but we do have Chuck E. Cheese's, and that's where I usually hang out. <laughs> that was okay. oddly detailed, Wilson. Is that you? Was that was that from personal experience? <laughs> Look, all I'm. I, I'm pretty sure the guys who talk about <laughs> know this by now, but it's it's weird because they're still like really nice over there, like too nice. I I think they know, but you know they have to still. <sighs> what are you talking what? about? I'm so confused. <laughs> Look, all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, when I go to get fucking fast food, I expect a sense of vague pity and derision, <laughs> and I do not fucking get that at Taco Bell. And that is disappointing. 
All right, we should talk about Guild Wars. Um, yeah, um, God Super damn Super it. Christ. August Jesus 25th, Christ. 2012. You know what Better ga- what, what other games coming out? Europa th- 4. European why are you, Cells why, 4. What, what, that's on the main out topic. Third quarter, Focus. 2013. Focus. Oh, okay. That's, that'll be All cool. Right. I like So, I like the main topic for this week three. is the Guild Wars Great Debate. We did it last week for professions. If you didn't listen yeah. to last week, you can listen to that to find out what our top professions you are. You learn about how Elementalist is the worst class ever and how Durin is a poo-poo head. Or awesome. Feces on your head, Duran. What do you think? <laughs> so we can mean, discuss you. I've got a week, two-year-old son, so that wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What race we recommend for a new person to play in Guild Wars 2 if this if this is their first time, essentially. So if you if yep. you're undecided for races, we're probably gonna help you there. Um or if you if you haven't played Guild Wars 2 yet, we're hopefully going to at least somewhat inform you as to what the races are about. And how this is going to go is a free-for-all discussion. Each person is going to take a race. I'm going to take two because there's not five of us. And we're going to pretty much duke I'll it out to two. see. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just argue that one's better than the other. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, we- <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, who's, who's going to start? Uh, I think we can run through them. Durin, you're taking Asura? Asura, yeah. Uh, Nubarama is humans. Uh, Rawson is taking Sylvari, and I'm taking mm-hmm. Norn and Char. Um, I, I'll, I'll guess I'll go second and last, probably, or third and last. Just, just, anyway, I'll split mine up. Um, who wants to go first? I'll go first Noob? because I mean, right, the Asura, hey. I mean, the biggest thing. Look at the picture on the screen for those you see in this live. I mean, that's that's reason enough. They deserve to be domesticated <laughs> by people. I, I agree. They should be house pets for humans, <laughs> and that's really all they're good for. Uh, but no, but oh, no, God. really, like their 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 zone is their zone is very well done. Uh, the the um, well, the events you have is, uh, who and what the Asura are. Okay, well, the Asura are are basically. Uh, yeah, I guess some people may not know. Um, though I'm probably the worst person to go into lore stuff about they're, they're like, they're Okay, like they're, they're basically they, they're a small you. race that emerged from Tyria 200 years ago after the destroyers came knocking from underground and since then they've expanded into the Tarnished Coast which is like a jungle area and they are small little elves or not elves, I don't want to say elves, elves but small little really? gnomes. gnomes I'm thinking of Santa's elves, alright? Santa Claus okay? <laughs> Shit Okay, just they're, they're, they're basically they're just they're small little people who are highly <laughs> little intelligent. People. Yes, little and people. They prefer to be called dwarves. Hi, they're, highly intelligent. They're yeah, fucking adorable as shit. Um, no, but not. everyone like, is so afraid to tell them adorable. that I want because to they will fucking eat your face. Them with my thighs. They will eat your face if you <laughs> call them adorable. So they, they got they got little pointy teeth and big fucking black soulless <laughs> eyes. They're I, I'll be I'll be I'll say this for Zumi. They're assurable. They They're are so no, um, but no, Rawson. As for the like black eyes or whatever, that's just people turning the uh, the pupil like all the way up. Like you can yeah, you can scary. have a good like green or blue or purple iris in there, and it looks fine and it doesn't look creepy. It's the eyes that sucks your soul. Now I, I will say, a husk. Trying to make a uh, not scary looking male Asura can be a bit challenging. Hard, yeah. Um, but. Yeah, if you want to go for like total cuteness, definitely go female Asura. It's pretty easy to do. They're um, the most adorable things. They, they are, are the yeah. most adorable things. So there's there's um, their zone is actually really cool. Uh, I like the aesthetic to their um, uh, their design, I guess, of their their architecture. Um, I, I I love the kind of uh, how does somebody describe it like. Like Aztec technology, yeah. futury kind of look to everything. Yeah, I kind of, um, I kind of want to say my part here because, all right, so the Asura, as, as they've pretty much pointed out, are the small race in Guild Wars Two. Um, the first thing I want to say, and I think I've said this before, is in terms of a mechanical sense, all the races are equivalent. They have the same land speed, the same swim speed, the same sink speed. Um, they they are absolutely mechanically the same. Their click boxes are the same, even though their character sizes are different. Um, their hit, the, sorry, their um, what was it? Damage boxes are also the same. So if you have an area effect, they will be affected by the same amount of area, even though one's smaller on screen than the other. Um, that's very important for any of, I guess, out there who are interested in PvP like myself. Um, that's the, one of the things I want to say about the Asura. The, the other thing in terms of like background for the, the race, I think one of the coolest things I heard about the Asura, which kind of makes me love them more than I already do, is that the Asura used to come are from underground. Suitable. 
they're they're an underground race that was pushed up as noob said by the destroyers but what is also important is that the asura used to be the absolute masters of their domain the the, the asura used to freaking rule underground that, that was it was all theirs. nothing could touch them the script were just like a, an annoyance to them back then they were just like the undomitable force underground that oh, it was pretty much unbeknownst to the humans for many many years um when they were pushed up uh, afterwards like they can't instead of coming out of the ground and then being all refugee like and being oh fuck we we've lost our great cities so, like everything's fallen they kind of went fuck it over again yeah let's just fuck so, it let's take this over the, the, the coolest race in my opinion well so, one of the coolest races Basically, they're like a bunch of horrible little drow. <laughs> except, except, instead of, except instead of being a race entirely made up of dominatrixes, they're a race made entirely up of horrible mutant Ferengi. <laughs> oh. Adorable little, adorable creatures. Adorable little mutant Ferengi. So that's the kind um, of where like, they're like, they're, they're very like stuck up. Well, not really stuck up, but they're really confident in themselves, yeah. let's just say. They're, um, they're arrogant. They're arrogant, and that kind of comes from this background where they used to be the masters, and now they want to continue to be the masters. They know they're the smartest. They are the most technologically advanced. And I mean, and I mean, let's two. let's be real here. They, see they will be every the other race is inferior. Um, no. <laughs> they will eventually. Oh, you mean be you mean humans will become their masters? Like like you know, it's instead of like a man's best friend is a dog. It's like a man's best friend is an asura. You know, you put him on a leash and then you take him out for a walk because that's what's going to happen to asura. Except the Asura are pretty much just, you know, going to just, force the humans to uh-huh, okay. just drown go their way, otherwise like they will make them the disappear. River. Maybe in like a, maybe in like a film, like uh, Rise of the Planet <laughs> of the Apes or something like that, where it's like <laughs> Rise know, of the Planet of the Asura, because that's like house pets rising up against people. But so like the other so, the other thing that I really like about them too is is like Silent Dante points out, um, they have probably the coolest fucking animations in this entire game. Oh yeah, definitely. Their their running These animation is great. Their dodging animation is crafted. great. Uh, their jumping animation is the best, and pretty much like probably the coolest thing ever is like you. Everybody has to make an Asura with a two handed weapon because the way they hold that sword is amazing. Like it's just yeah, absolutely. Because, uh, because like well, the Asura are these small things with big heads, really, and and all the animations around the Asura have have been kind of like skewed in like this weird direction where they're they're essentially mad scientists. Like if you if you boil the, the Asura as a race down in terms of personality, they're a bunch of mad, sci- mad scientists completely unchecked. Like they're just allowed to do whatever the fuck. So you have like giant golems and like crazy huge floating cubes in the sky and di- crazy like um what would you say pyramid looking things as a bunch of their architecture like things that don't even don't even make sense from a geo any form of like architectural standpoint instead of like efficiency for space they don't care they just freaking they do whatever they want and so they're the mad scientists of the race so they're these big heads and these tiny little bodies so you have these mad scientists that move and when they move when they stop the head keeps going or when they they do a flip in the air which is their dodging animation the head guy stays they, in one place, and the flip. body kind of rolls around it. It's 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 a it's cra- they have this this cra- inherent craziness about everything I do. Assurableness. I, I'm telling you, <laughs> they'd be like the best domesticated pets. You know, you got Asura a breeders in the farms, <laughs> and they sell like city folk the the Asura so they can bring Except them. Except that if houses. you piss them off, they will fucking eat you. That's why you de de claw them. de <laughs> keep them. <laughs> <laughs> just you, guns. You take, they you just take have one guns. of those big, heavy-duty nail files. And, oh you know, God! Go to town. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, Sorry, Asura. You're only gonna be able to eat paste from now on. <laughs> <laughs> no, like but the, the Asura will respond to that jelly, by yeah. just making mecha teeth and just fucking going to town anyway. <laughs> that, that's how the Asura <laughs> deals with shit. They're awesome. So, Durin, what were you going to say? I think you were talking about their um, starting zone. Yeah, so the starting zone, like, they, they have a kind of a cool little start. Like, you know, when you make the character, you choose, like, your invention type or whatever, and that plays into the beginning stuff. Um, and It's dangerous. It's absolutely dangerous in that starting zone or that city. How's it dangerous? Oh, okay. Well, yes. I, w- <laughs> yes. I will say, I will the say most their, city, their the city is uh, the multi- multi-leveled and... <laughs> If you're not paying attention, um, you can very easily fall a very long way and die. Slopes um, that look like 
they could be traversed Those do really not look into like, no, an endless. No, yes, they do. Shut your face. <laughs> I, I was Shut looking at it. I was looking at it, and that is that. Maybe, does maybe not look it's because like my traverse. eyes are slanty. That slanty slopes maybe. look okay. Could be, but that's racist. You can't say that. You can't say maybe because <laughs> that's racist. You racist. What's wrong with you? See, you're racist. <laughs> I'm a racist. Either way, yeah. I, yeah, I think they're cute, and they would make good pets. <laughs> But it's, it's kind of cool because like, it, it, the racial city is pretty important. Now, you, it's important to note that every character can visit all the other racial cities, essentially from level two. Like you just hit um, H for your you character sheet, did, yeah. go to the aisles, of which are the um, PvP aisles. But don't worry, you don't have to join PvP or anything. There's a teleporter there that takes you to Lion's Arch. You just walk through that, which is like one of the hub cities in Guild Wars 2. And there's a bunch of teleporters from there to take you to any of the other um, starting cities. And you can do that at level 2. So you can visit all the starting cities at level 2. So that's it's it's semi-important because it's kind of the um, the character of your race is embodied by these cities. But at the same time, don't feel like you're being excluded from anything. But yeah, the Asura starting city is one of the coolest, I, I think. Yeah, I, second, I would say I would favorite. agree that it is beautiful. And it will look even more beautiful when humans have colonized it as a settlement. <laughs> But the humans don't need that city because they have fucking divinities reach. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's, let's stay on the Asura for a bit longer. City. Beautiful city in the world. Let's stay on the Asura for a bit longer. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is the hard thing about the um, the debate format in this case because I kind of like all the races. It's, it's hard but for me to we argue all, We really them. know which one's on top, don't we? I, I, I yeah, won't let you have that right until now. the end. <laughs> I won't let you have that till the end. Um <laughs> So, Duran, what, what, what are you feeling? So, did you like their starting area? Like, how do you feel about their starting zone, their, start, their first um, opening quest? We don't, we don't want to ruin any of the um, the starting stuff for anyone who hasn't done, the, done yeah, that yeah, before, yeah. but just, like, a general... Um, kind of, well, you know, I, I mean, are we talking about, like, the tutorial stuff, or, or are we talking, like, after both. that? Both, yeah. The, the tutorial, the, the stuff, the tutorial stuff, stuff is really cool. That. I actually really like how they handle that. I, I like the... Absolutely. The, the kind of forward motion of it. I mean, all of them kind of have that, but the, this one, and especially the, the boss of it, is really, really cool. Um, but really then coming awesome. coming out of that, yeah, um, it has probably one of the more uh, diverse, um, yeah, beginning. Uh, um, oh, the name Starting of the escaping me. Pretty well, the, the the heart er, um, stuff in that first area. Oh, well, that's hearts. Well. The uh, it, it, they probably have some of the most diverse things. You have the the. The board uh, game thing. Board yeah. game thing. You have that's the, pretty fun. I'll admit. Yeah, yeah. You have you have the really golems that you can turn that. on um, by answering certain things, and the way you answer them may or may not start them up. And then you have some other ones that you can like activate, and then you have to fight them down. Um, <laughs> so like they have that kind of stuff, and then moving on from there, the dynamic stuff that they do is really cool too. Um, all kind of cool dealing with the golems like, and stuff. The yeah, because the starting serious starting area is kind of different than the others in that they all have like a little bit of intrinsic humor to them especially in terms of the scale and but yeah. also um a, a witty witty writing i think they have the wittiest writing all yeah, the they, are, they are very I mean, like again arrogant and they would they you know look down on other races well, and, and and more specifically, not, not just other races yeah, like they, they also to kind of each other like oh those fuckers fucked up again god damn it all right hang on I'll go fix <laughs> With, it. without the f word without the f without word. the f word okay no no you don't fix it i'll fix it because i know you'll fuck it up like and that's yeah. the kind of stuff. Yeah, exactly. This does, and I absolutely love it's it. It's great. It's hilarious. It's horrible. Like, like, like they have, <laughs> yeah, like they have this this mindset oh. of, like you said, like they're the you know most intelligent uh, race. But then also each individual Asura believes that they are the most intelligent Asura, <laughs> and the rest are all just fuck ups. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like they carry. It's great. Um, Fantastic. But uh, yeah, so like it's, the study areas. It's, have it's those like, good ready it's to like them. the time that I said Duran. Duran, you yourself had said. That jungles are, mm, I'm fine with jungles, but I know you do not have. Well, even even beyond that, let's just, for jungles. I, I want to break it down because for the starting couple of heart quests and dynamic events for the Asura, um, you, for other races, especially like the Norn, for example, it's all about kind of conquering or killing things, right? But the Asura mm-hmm. tends to have a little bit more of like a diversity in. In that, um, they have a little bit of an, el- um, uh, yeah, like a mental element to it. So yeah. you find yourself answering riz- riddles or trying to like um, program uh, golems that have been broken. Yeah, there's a lot of or- like go, go in and fidget with this thing for a little bit and see what happens. Yeah, something yeah. like in a one in a like, oh god, now it's attacking like that. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Probably also one of, one of the coolest reasons and one of the reasons why I would say um, Asura would be a really good one for people starting off is that I believe uh, I could be wrong because I didn't play a ton of some of the other ones. Um, but I believe it is the one that introduces you um, the quickest to uh, water combat. 
Yeah, um, I think so. No, it might. No. Be, I think so. Wait, what's faster? I, uh, it's, it's it's like three minutes walk from the East Borny area. Yeah, it's like the water. second or third uh, renowned heart is water. Pretty, pretty much underwater, and it's amazing. It's a really good one. And there's like, also the a dynamic event that takes place there as well. The giant shark. The giant shark was freaking crazy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the yeah, one with remember, the shark. Okay. I yeah, I guess so. Shark. Yeah, the shark. Okay. Yeah. So like, yeah. because of that, and, and that being, and the 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 underwater thing being so like so much better than it is in like every other game. Like, I love that they with the Asura they introduce it so quickly, and I wish they would do the same with all the other races because it is a really cool feature of the game that a lot of people who maybe you know start off with a human or a char or something will not get to for a very very long time and. It'll really, it, it would, I mean, it really, really could, could kind of suck if you end up going 20 hours into the game, you've unlocked all your abilities, you've had them unlocked, you're, you know, feeling real good about your character, and then you go into water and now you're back down to one ability again. I, I don't think it takes that long for, to find for most water races. combat. In. For, for most races, but, yeah. Yeah, but the, the Zatura kind of underlines it a bit better than the others do, in my, in my personal opinion, because they kind of, there's a heart quest there, and it's really, like, pretty much right there as soon as you start. And as soon as you go underwater, not only is there a heart quest, but also multiple e- pretty interesting dynamic events spawn there at the same time so it kind of like forces everyone in that kind of area which which i think is pretty good i i think it's probably the best execution of an early um underwater section and also remember when i said giant shark earlier well the sharks are normal size but you're a sewer so it's kind yeah. of i love it i love it it's so cool because it feels like this enormous thing rocks up and you're just like tiny little dude. Also, the Asura animations are great because well, I, I'm just all over the place, but I love so much about the Asura. Um, the Asura animations are great because they're tiny, you are but because of the movement speed limitations, everyone has to move at the same speed in the end. All the animations have to be a little bit extra quickly. So when they're underwater and fighting the shark, they're like, their little legs are just like bashing them. They're crazy. They're crazy. I love it. I love it. I love it. And just in general, like somebody mentioned oh in, in the God. chat earlier too, like they, um, Jesus Christ, <laughs> like they, they actually feel faster when you're running just because their legs are moving so much faster. Yeah. Whereas I yeah, actually felt little- like uh, this last stress test, whenever I was uh, playing a Norn, I felt so goddamn slow. Yeah. Because uh, again, the stride has to be much longer because everybody does move at the exact same speed. Mm hmm. Yeah, and so the Asura, especially with their, their back flips and forward flips, just to cover the same distance on a dodge, like mm-hmm. you definitely definitely feel a little bit more mobile as an Asura, even though you're not. Like you aren't in the in fact, but you feel it, and, and it doesn't definitely does make a difference. If you like a character, like for example, if you if you're planning on making a thief, I personally think you would have the most enjoyable experience with the Asura, or a, like a Daggers Elementalist. I, I think you would have a little bit better experience. Anyway. Anything else to add? I th- the starters, the start uh, area is awesome. The city is tell awesome. Tell me about the jungle, Durin. Tell me why you think the jungle is the best zone that's, in the game. That's that's more so a personal issue. Like I, I personally have gotten um, a bit tired of jungles. Uh, they they do a really good job of of spicing this one up and making it look uh, unique compared to like say a Stranglethorn Vale. Um, but it, it, again, like I said, that's a personal thing. I, I don't think. Most people are not going to have an issue with the jungle. Um, well, Zumi it, had a problem as well playing. It's a similar issue too, though. Uh, yeah, exactly. So I, I, I think <laughs> there are there are those of us who have played a lot of MMOs and who pl- have played a lot of jungle and have gotten kind of tired of it. But the majority of people aren't going to have an issue, and I wouldn't hold that I against want the that Vietnam zone. Jungle. I, I want a Vietnam I want, MMO. I want an MMO set in the same jungle as the first Crisis because that was an awesome jungle. Except and, it wasn't an and, awesome game, but we won't go into that discussion. Hey, let's not. Let's not. Let's not derail it. We, we're we're well, kind of staying on I'm topic. I'm just saying, instead of instead of giant rats, I wanna I wanna hit Koreans. Hey, <laughs> what? Hey, hey, what the hell? Come on. Well, I, I, I like the jungle. I think I think the jungle of uh, in the serious yeah, area is kind of pretty I, amazing because it's the more like a one. swamp. Um, yeah, well, I haven't seen too much of it, but we'll get there. Um, the, the Sura one is kind of more of a swamp. So there's these frog people. I forgot what the name is that you get interact with. They are with ha- a bunch. Hajit. Hackett. Hackett. No, Hackett. No, Hackett. Hackett. Yeah, Hackett. Um, the, the frog people and those, those kind of live in like swampy areas. Admiral um, Hackett. So you you interact with them, and so you spend a lot of your time in these <laughs> the like best game in these swamps and going through these pretty 
some of them pretty difficult, wonderfully difficult um, underground sections with, um, with with like underground waterways and stuff that you have to swim through and pretty interesting combat with the Hecate. Uh, there's evil Hecate and good Hecate, obviously. I, how did, you, did you find the Asura starting area difficult as um, during? I thought it was a pretty good balance, in my opinion. Yeah, I think it was definitely... I, I don't think I really ran into any issues where it felt too difficult. I mean, granted, I, I didn't play the entire... Not, not even the entire starting zone, Um but I, I basically got to just kind of the, the renowned hearts just past the water. Um, so I didn't play all of it. But from what I did play, it definitely didn't feel too difficult. Uh, I felt like the mm. renowned, renowned heart stuff felt right. The dynamic events um, felt right for the amount of people that were there. It, it, it didn't feel like the and, and even the personal story stuff didn't feel terribly difficult. Uh, not, right. not as bad as at least like the Norn stuff did early on. Yeah. And so it, that kind of just rounds out the, the the sad thing I have here is that I, I don't think any of us can think of aside from Rawson with his aesthetic problems, I don't think there's anyone here who can say anything negative about starting with the Asura because they, they're really uh, pretty well, much a class act, aren't they? Do, what you, what's up, new? I don't know. It's not the <laughs> correct race to play. All right, all right. All right well, well Rawson, do you have any actual objective things negative about the Asura starting area? They're ugly. <laughs> the fucking ugly, horrible. Look at, no, the zone is fine. Uh, it's just <laughs> the the little horrible munchkin creatures. That oh yeah, yeah that's because Tarkin has the same problem. The Asura are jerks. If you don't like playing a, if you want to play like a noble character or a character, I hate to get to RP kind of stuff because this is my forte. I, I want to play a mesmer. I want well, to and, be an asshole. And I will say, like <laughs> m- my wife also, she does not have any any interest whatsoever in playing an Asura after playing a little bit of the starting zone because she felt like they were too much of assholes and she didn't want to play. That I, kind I of character. think my biggest yeah. problem was with the intro game part, except the boss, which was great, but. Um, it just it felt a lot less dramatic. I don't want to say like being dramatic is good. I really but, agree. Like, I actually when you really play agree. the the human intro thing, it's like there's a centaur attack. The the town of Shamor is under attack, and you you feel some sort of urgency. For some reason, Asura just felt like me running around and killing these golems and just following the quest marker. It, I, it there was no sense yeah. of urgency or like me. There's caring. no sense of impending doom. Right, and that's, well, that's yeah, the, but I mean at the same time, the Asura's impending doom was you know. Their whole upheaval from the underground. So. Yeah, it already happened. So yeah. they, they, right, they, they kind I'm, of. I'm just saying, like it for for a game, you know, where you want to be not emotionally invested in the story, but at least like excited and like interested in the story. Um, I feel like they didn't do a very good job of grabbing my attention. In that I would, I would. Game. Well, I, I I think they grabbed my attention, but not in the way I expected it to. It did not feel like it was the same as the other areas. It didn't feel no. like. There was this kind of like progression towards this all like crazy conflict because the the Sura are kind of doing their own thing. They they're busy inventing and taking over the world. They don't care much about the dragons really because that's a human problem or that, that's like a, a norm problem. They don't give a shit. But uh, so I, I, it's going to be interesting seeing how they're eventually linked in to the point where the dragons become a problem for them because at the moment they kind of the reason that this starting area doesn't really feel as um, like just foreboding as the rest do. Is because of that. Like the Asura kind of feel that they're apart. They, they feel like they're yeah, a superior I mean, race and don't have to worry about the rest they've, of them. They've clearly segregated themselves from the other races. And by the by the time you hit the, uh, what is it, 15 to 25 zone, mm-hmm. um, like you'll already start seeing that because at that point in the story, um, you are already, like the, the Asura are forced to, to uh, cooperate with the human and the Silvari in that zone. Um, yeah. to just to keep peace and stuff. So you're already starting to see the interactions there. And that'll, of course, yeah. then just continue to grow as, as you play on in the story. Absolutely. But I just, yeah, Noob's criticism, I think, is correct in saying that if you want to just be like in the lifeblood of the story, I feel like that probably the yep. next one we'll touch on, humans, is probably the best way to. St- what, you, what are your thoughts, Noob? I mean, you, you're the advocate for humans today. Uh, humanity. I, humanity first. Um, in fact, I'd like <laughs> to advertise my new guild. It's called Cerberus. Oh, and I'm, I'm only accepting human candidates and um, any other subhuman races. Did you play Mass all. Effect? You didn't play Mass Effect. Did yes, you? I play Mass Effect two, Do one. Okay. I haven't played three. It's right. it's the Star Trek of our generation, except <laughs> instead of anything poignant or relevant. All right, we should okay, not no, get I'm into this that com- there. I don't want. I'm this stopping that there. Here. Yeah, I'm stopping that there. It says you get to fuck a lady with the stuff. Stop it. Stop it. Just stop. What are you doing? Um. So, noob. 
What, so, what would you say? Who, what are the humans in Guild Wars 2? I think they're actually pretty humans, different from other humans. Humans are um, mammals. They are warm-blooded animals. Yep. And they, yep. um, they Red evolved. blood? Well, actually, they might be different from what you have. Do, red, red blood. Do they wear what? panties? <laughs> they, they do wear panties. Panties and confirmed. That's my favorite. Panties part. are All confirmed. Right, okay. No. So humans basically have been the prime focus of the Guild Wars franchise. Um, the original Guild Wars was based around humans. You only play the humans and really the only time where you cooperated with other races was in the short expansion of the north and from playing a lot of human i do get the vibe that this is a human centric game in a human centric world they seem um, closer tied to the story than the other classes yes. at least at the start um you feel like you are way more engaged in the fight against the dragons from what i've played as a human than you have against any other race like um you know, you have the long-standing conflict with the Char. You have to deal with dragons, and there are centaurs attacking you constantly. It's like it's the most action-filled and story-driven race out of all of them, in my opinion. And I it's think it's kind of interesting because the race that's actually most immediately affected by the dragons in Guild 2 are the Norn. Because the Norn but have been forced down from. It is their, not as uh, played out as humans for some reason. Yeah, it just doesn't. It doesn't feel quite. The, well, I we'll guess get there. Norn we'll get don't there. see it as a threat. They're like, oh, it's yeah. just another thing to conquer. But exactly. either way, I'll, humans, I'll, I'll um, that, they, they are better genetics. They have better genetics. And they deserve <laughs> to be the rulers of the world. And any other <laughs> race mm-hmm. should be stomped or so, domesticated. The humans in Guild Wars 2... I can make are, pretty ladies with humans. Yes, you can make the prettiest ladies with humans. Yay. The humans in Guild Wars 2 are a bit different to humans in other I can games. make my anime yeah. princess. Because they are <laughs> humans. Like, in the end, they're still humans. So yes. Some people would say that they're probably boring in that way because they're the same as us. I actually have the opposite opinion. I think they're the most yep. easy to connect to because they're the same as me. Um, anyway, the humans in this game are kind of like the o- the elder race. Oddly enough, as weird as it sounds... Humans are kind of like the elder race in the continent of Tira. They're not. They're, it's, that's not. Well, the Char true. have been around. Since exactly, the it's not true but, at all. Yeah. But they feel that way because how humans have reacted to things, or how elder races in other fantasy genre, like fantasy books, novels, like movies, like Lord of the Rings, for example, have been treated in that the humans are kind of like a bastion of. Um, well, they're essentially medieval. They, they seem to be yeah. the the closest equivalency towards what we think of as fantasy. They are they have the huge bastions, gigantic castles, um, keeps that kind of stuff. They wear armor, like they they have knights in shining like armor, literally. Sixteenth, seven or sixteenth, uh, yeah, seventeenth century. century Europe, Western yeah. Europe. But at the same time, that's that's one element. So they have they definitely have that 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 kind of boring, very samey fantasy nature. But the but second element history... is, yeah, they're actually quite different because humans in most forms of fantasy are the up-and-coming race they're the new race that's overtaking other races in terms of dominance and power and the military strength and that kind of stuff and we breed faster than the elves for example in the lord of the rings um in guild wars 2 they kind of flip that on the head humans are aliens they're the declining race and yeah, they're declining. Humans are on they've humans are they've been fucked in the ass by the char and now dragons are going to fuck them up too I would argue is, that the is, humans are the elves well, of Guild no. Wars 2, not yeah. the Silvari. What, I, what do you mean? Because uh, they're because they're the old they 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 feel like an old race. They are right. declining in culture. There's, they are being slaughtered pretty much on all fronts by the dragons, by the centaurs. They're reducing in numbers. They're fortifying instead of expanding. Humans aren't getting out there like the Asura. It's like the Byzantine Empire in the 14th and 16th, or 14th and 15th century. I don't know. Any, I don't know anything no, about no, history. Okay. I don't know anything. Hey, about history. Let's, <laughs> let's play Crusader Kings too. Yeah. Uh, no, but uh, um, definitely story wise, so this feels yeah. strongest, and it's just everything about humans is beautiful. It's beautiful. So that's another thing. So humans again are, are different in, in terms of background because they have a little different like, headspace uh, compared to other pieces of fantasy that they're withdrawing, that they're, they're holding the line. They're essentially Gondor. Human feels a lot like Gondor. And that kind of brings me to the other element of humans. Humans have probably some of the most beautiful vistas and architecture yes, in Guild Wars 2. Um, and I, if you think Gondor, that's something very... I actually, Divinity's Reach feels a lot like is the wonderful. Peter Jackson Best city. Gondor to me because it is, it is gigantic and it majestic is at the same time. Yeah, It's very... Like, every single thing in that city is... 
there's like shops and there's shopkeepers that sell stuff and they sell just like cotton candy and stuff like that. It just, I think it's the greatest city I've seen in a video game. Wait, it's, how it's can the you, most city like. How game. can you make uh, cotton candy with 16th century European technology? Well, not cotton candy, sorry. Magic. No, just like magic. <laughs> Magic. Magic. <laughs> magic. Oh, there you go. A magical cotton candy machine. Yeah, I think it's important magic. to bring up that, okay, who here is actually going to make a human main? I, I have my hand up. Me? I, Me. I'll probably make a I human I plan main. on making five human mains. I think, one of my, I, think, I think one of my first four or so might be a human. I really like the starting okay. zone. I just, yes, sir, a man. <laughs> be ready to become my pet Duran. you're gonna be my dog I'll feed oh, I will dog. fucking destroy I, you I think it's too. telling that we've all pretty much played all of the races in Guild Wars 2 and aside from me I'm pretty much a, a human fanboy um I mean actually we're all pretty much human fanboys aren't we well Noob oh, you, you're, you'd count yourself as a well Noob, um, noob would count I, I'm, I'm not a human fanboy I, I'm a human supremacist I'm a human fanboy, and uh, I believe every Rawson, other race. When you're when you're given other races to play in a fantasy game, do you usually play human? Uh, usually I do wind up playing human because I'm a boring, boring person. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. Like human, <laughs> like anything human, I, it helps me relate better with the story than like an elf or an orc, especially an orc. human. I don't like They're playing us. orcs. Yeah, yeah. See, I'm, like, I'm, g- I'm generally the other I, way I around. Pretty. I'm generally the other way around. For me, it's more like I am human. I want to play something that's a bit different. So that's why I tend to gravitate more towards oh. like the, yeah, and that's like the, the elves the, or the small people I, or whatever. I, I want to be I want to be attra- I want to be attractive in a game because this is yeah. a fantasy. So I want to pretend that I'm physically <laughs> <to> others. <laughs> and I'm a female. Like I well, I cross dress, but that never really <laughs> makes me a woman. So I have to be a woman. <laughs> yeah. in wars. So yeah, humans have pretty much the uh, almost unarguably the best looking main city, in, in my opinion. Yeah. So wait, uh, Durin, did you agree that Divinity's Reach is pretty much where it's at? Oh, absolutely. That city is amazing. I, like I, as much as I love the Asur and, and I love I love the race, I love their starting zone and everything. I I still feel like their city just doesn't compare to Divinity's Reach, just on a, a visual scale or, or standpoint. The, I I kind of have to agree. I, like as I said earlier. It's, it's, it seems that humans are the most beautiful race. I, I think, fine, think it was. Fine. Exactly, right? You yeah. can be beautiful. You can yeah. be an attractive You can be beautiful. The city is beautiful. Yeah. The landscape is Yeah, and that's one thing stunning. I will say. Like, when you were talking earlier about like uh, you know, all of us here are human fanboys, I'm actually the opposite. Like I said, I tend to avoid the humans. I, I actually went through most okay. of my time in WoW never making a human character. Um, right. But the humans in this game look so good. Like They, just, yeah, they did an amazing job with humans in this game to make them like... Not not cartoony humans like a lot of MMOs do, but also not not really hit that uncanny valley um, either. Yeah, well, I I, will, I, will, I have a dissenting point opinion on that point, but aside from that, I, I think one of the major reasons we like the humans so much beyond the beauty of them because that's pretty much superficial. They also have an incredibly well designed starting area. So it's doing. Yes, I think do. you had a point on that. And and noob, who was the start? Noob, maybe. Um, having played until like I was level 36 and the majority of the time I've spent that in human centric zones. Um, I can say that I felt in comparison to any of the other zones, except maybe a couple of the char zones uh, and not having gone far enough in the other Silvarian or zones that human seems like where it's at. Like the most of the stuff is happening. It's very pretty looking, um, <laughs> especially, you know, the the joy of just running around and then running into a large village. Oh yeah, that's that kind of actually. unexpected. It was yeah. it's just a giant farm like Beetle Beetleton. Is you're just running around Castle Hills. That's another great point. And then, and then you you see all this farmland and you're like, oh cool. And then you keep on running in and then it's a village of Beetleton. It's like a really nice village. There's a dungeon there which I'm excited to go into. But um, not enough beetles there. There's not enough <laughs> beetles. There are lots of beehives that you need to crush. As well as graffiti, but I don't know. Well, Noob's brought up a good point there. The human starting area, especially for the guys who who played the first Guild Wars, definitely is the way to go. Except for maybe the char yeah. in terms of references for the first Guild Wars. People who really want that kind of stuff. Because there's the graveyard, and I think there's a bunch of references in there that I missed the first time through. But beyond that, you have Beetleton. And you can see what Beetleton's become after all these years. You can... Um, what, what else was there? There was the uh, Temple of Ages... I got yeah, a ton uh, of the sunken temple of ages. Yeah, um, just everything. There was a small town. Ta- Lion's to Arch, which is kind of Lion's Arch is there. 
It's not really it's human. Been it's been taken now, over like, by all the area? undesirables. <laughs> um, it's but, kind of an international area now, but like Kreider feels yeah. like Kreider. No, but right outside of Gendar, uh, Lion's Arch, Gendaran Plains is is a human centric zone, just like right above it. There's right, a human area above it. Um, that's the level thirty four to or no, that's a level twenty five to thirty five or something like that. Right. So so Durin, um, um, I don't know. You you had something to say in terms of the actual design of the starting zone and and quests and stuff, didn't you? I just I, I I I basically I I enjoy them a lot. I feel like they they do a really good job of kind of um, pushing you through those zones. Uh, the dynamic events are really good and, and and I think well placed, which I know sounds a little weird, but in some of the, I feel like in some of the other starting zones, the dynamic events kind of take place um, around the uh, the renowned hearts, whereas in the human area, they really introduce it to you directly on the renowned hearts. And so they, they, you know, while you're doing the renowned thing, like a dynamic event may pop up and then you go and do that and that might lead to somewhere else and you're doing something else there then. And like they do a better job of yeah. introducing that stuff than maybe some of the other uh, other ones. I remember the Norn one, the dynamic events I felt like were kind of a little bit too far off the beaten path a lot of times. I, I, would, I almost I would want to say like Arena yes. Net wants people starting out the game to play human. It kind Why? of feels that way. Why would you say that? Like just the beginning zone has i feel in my opinion is the best way that pulls off like uh the renown and dynamic event mechanic for me like i found myself getting or wandering a lot more in that zone and i'm pretty sure that's one that's is that like because what arena net wants people to do i, I kind of like, no, just, suspect just going because from, um didn't you think that the human zone kind of being so pretty you kind of have a more, more of a a feeling of hey what's over that hill yeah. because what you right, see right. over that hill is usually beautiful Right, right, but that and there were just lots of um, moving dynamic events and oh, that's uh, true. and renowned quests that just made me move along the map, and I found myself exploring the area and way more encouraged to explore the areas in the human zones than I did with say the Norn zones or the Char zones. I would disagree with that, but I, I'll bring that up when I can talk about the Norn. Um, I think I think the density of because I. I think someone in the chat, someone agrees with me. The layout of when you look over, like, it's just in terms of if you bring up the world map and you look at the human starting zone and you see where the hearts are, it has one of the most well constructed layouts in terms of where you're moving or like just the coverage of area you're doing when you're starting the game. Like, so you have the first hard quest is here, the, the next one is a bit to the right, but there's also one to a bit to the south. It gives you enough options when you do any of these yeah. hard quests, which is the kind of where you're starting off, but also gives you a lot of dynamic events along the way. It's, it's, it's really well constructed. This is like, there's a constantly something to do in the human starting area. Yeah, that's you never one, feel well, bored. That is one negative thing I will say about the Asura starting zone is I felt like theirs is a little bit too focused. Uh, it's right. kind of a it's kind of a straight line to the north, and then you go from there over to the west. Like it's just it's very much you go from this one to that one to that one, and then over to this one, and then over to that one. Um, and I think yeah. maybe at some point it starts to branch, but the human one is very much just kind of an open area. Like you go out there. And like while yes, there is this one that's you know recommended for level two ish, and there's this one recommended for this level, um, but they're like you said, they're a little bit more spread, and it, it still but pushes you spread, in, the, in the right direction. But there's none too far away from one another. There's yeah, always like one. It, yeah, just exactly. Just it, it pushes just you in the, right, in, in the right direction, but still makes you feel like you have options, and you're not being led down a path. Exactly. And, and what, Rosen, did, would you agree with this? So how how do you feel about this? The human starting area. I, I liked it um, overall. It, it would certainly be my number two choice immediately after Silvari. Right. Um, yeah, we'll get into Jesus, why I like Silvari. A helicopter, apparently. I are you are you being raided right now? <laughs> I, I think I'm a I, penny raid. <laughs> oh, I've been on a penny raid. It's kind of terrifying. It's a proper ass military helicopter, I think. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, what I, kind I, of what I'm kind of helicopter? Myself, but... Maybe I can pilot it. <laughs> but I, how do you? No, uh, sorry, noob. You were saying before that you felt that the storyline in of the human area kind of fits better with the core storyline of Guild Wars Two. Can, yes. can you just run us through that? Um, so basically, this story. Well, not that said. The beginning story is is quite different from Guild Wars Guild Wars Two. Like it just. Um, it, it seems like the conflict that the humans have is similar to the game itself, but. I'll go over that later. The beginning is a lot... The personal story, which I played until around, like, level 20, which was all they showed for the beta. Right. Um, it It is very, very fun. 
That's that's really <laughs> uh, without spoiling anything. That's all I can say. It feels um, more epic. It definitely it feels, feels more, so epic much more epic than the others. Um, mm-hmm. You are. I felt like I had a bigger role in what was happening for my race than I did with any of the other. Um, it's, it's kind of interesting because like, even beyond the personal story, like, like I felt like the hero area, is what I felt like. I didn't yeah. feel like a cog in a bigger machine. I felt like the hero, and I think f- that's I prefer being the cog in a bigger machine in like a first person shooter. But I like being the hero in an MMO. See, and I actually would I, I would actually argue the other direction. I think being the hero in an MMO is so fucking common at this point. Like it's nice right. being the cog in the bigger machine for once in an MMO. Yeah, I the the problem is with MMOs for me at least is you can go ahead and claim I'm the hero and I save the day, but the problem is I know for a fact that everyone else is also the hero. Right, but that's the nice thing about oh, I guess they're still all heroes, but it's slightly different hero because you have a different personal story and you well, go I, through I think different kinds of things. Even beyond the personal story, like Rawson, I think your point is relatively invalidated when it comes to dynamic events because when you're saving a town, I hate to bring this one up. When you're saving a town from centaurs, <laughs> Shade um, wait, when, does, when does that happen in the human area? Logan Thackeray needs Jesus. your help. Jesus, when you save your town from centaurs, you do feel like this sounds being salted, and literally, you you look around, you're the only one there, or there's maybe like two other people, and you feel like a hero when you hold them off because they, they do make it pretty difficult yep. in some of those situations. Like it's beyond that, like straight up within the second area, you already sieging entire encampments of centaurs. Like, there's, like, siege engines. Yeah. There's just, like, big, massive scale, in t- which is weird, because you kind of think that Norn would be the thing for that, but the humans, the scale of the conflict is gigantic in a lot of the cases. It, it, it feels, feels really It epic. does have, like, a slight, you're still a cog of the bigger machine, but at the same time, you're a hero. You're an at important cog. You, you're... Right, you're an important cog. You're yeah. not the, the one that's doing everything. Yeah. Because you have, you know, S- Seraph guys around you fighting and dying. Exactly. And it's like a giant conflict. But at the same time, you, you have some sort of accomplishment, a bigger sense it, of accomplishment that, hey, if I wasn't there, these guys would not have made it. Yeah. It, it, it's, it sounds like it would certainly make more of a, uh, a virtual world. Yeah. Like a more living, breathing. Yeah. Oh, that's also another point because the human area is so well it's it's dense but also makes a lot of sense in that there's farmlands where there should be farmlands there's um supply the supply routes where there should be supply routes it feels like a very living area in the in the human not in terms of just like because for example the um the asura starting area does feel living but because that's it, it's it's brought to life by the students interaction with the world around them where, whereas the human area feels settled so it's like walking into a like a medieval world where things are yeah. kind of operating as they kind of should be things are where you expect them to be to some extent some cases like you feel like the interactions are well executed for example you walk into Denny's reach you can so you can see merchants moving around and you can see them at right. stalls like it feels alive in a way that a lot of other races especially the norn for example don't um there's this there's a density of people there's just a lot of it that really is well accomplished in terms of like just and, and thanks and to the fact and, that you know humanity is under attack there's always something to do yeah. There's like a huge event going on. Yeah. Um, I guess the the multi- events in like Char area I found were like mostly fighting ghosts, but these weren't <laughs> attacking ghosts. These were ghosts that were already there. Oh yeah, or that's, something it's like, like that. exterminating rather than right. defending. Right, and human area, you're just running around, and suddenly, oh my god, there are centaurs, centaur hordes attacking this town. Please help oh, bandits. us. Bandits, yeah. You know, or bandits, yeah, bandits too. Bandits are jerks. Bandits are no, real yes. jerks in the human. They, they light they light crops on fire. What the hell? The <laughs> what do you get out of that? You're not abandoning anyone. You're just being a jerk. You're, you're, you're terrorizing the population. Uh, someone mentioned in their chat, which is a good terrorists. point, which I think is like the biggest uh, detraction to the human race is is Logan Thackeray. I don't oh, know why God. he exists. Oh, and man. I think he See, is the biggest little chode in the world. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Logan Thackeray <laughs> apologist because I kind of I probably would have done did what he did in that book. I, I would have. I don't know. Anyway, let's not, let's not go too deep into lore. I think a dragon is lore. a bigger. <sighs> then your queen. I don't know. The queen. Guess what? Queens don't live forever. You know, <laughs> dragons. Dragons do. Dragons do. <laughs> dragons um, how do you know? How do you know that dragons live forever? Well, you, we, they because can't because you're supposed to kill know? them, right? Because anyway, I'm a dragon. So I'm there's detra- well, so that, that humans aren't perfect. Dragon, aren't <laughs> there's there's a there's a many things that I think are significant detractions detractions for them. For one, they're humans. So 
they whoa, look like humans. Like, they move like humans. They but they're beautiful humans. So it's just, well, so they it's would, not I think what he means is, is that a lot of people, myself included, tend to find humans boring in fantasy settings. Yeah. Well, what's boring about them? Uh, if you don't, uh, look they past exist their outside background. my house. <laughs> if I want to see a human, I can go, you know, to a park. You know, with my shades right, on, but it, hiding in the corner, watching them. Do you see humans in the park fighting centaurs and bandits? No, but do, do you, you see giant cats you, in the are, park fighting <laughs> centaurs? Or even just giant cats in general? Well, I see giant around. cats. Well, I mean, cats. yeah, this is just because you're not taking your medication. I see giant <laughs> cats when I go over to the local furry convention. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Like, like, and they're just as frightening as Char. The, the humans are... It's interesting because a lot of the armor in Guild Wars 2 feels like it was designed for the humans as a base set and then expanded to the other races. So they do look beautiful no matter what you get. But at the end, they're, they're the middle in terms of size. They're the middle Safari in terms of speed and nice. animation speed. Um, I'll, we'll get there. Oh, we'll definitely get there. Um, they, the middle in terms of animation speed, they, they're just... In one way, you can you can see you can say that they're definitive, but you can use that same those same arguments to say that they're average. They feel like the most average race in Guild Wars Two. If you if you're a person oh. who doesn't who does he likes to detract. As well, but in to. in like baseline aesthetics, but not yeah. not in terms of like the story or anything. Yeah, exactly. And that's and when it comes to me, I think one of the my major major problems with with humans in Guild Wars Two was something I really struggled with until I figured out what I was doing with my main character, which I'll reveal in the future. Um, is that humans are pretty, and I think that's a bad thing in many ways. I I'm, I'm pretty. I I <laughs> I wish I was pretty. When it comes to like you know making a character that that I can somewhat connect with, I can't connect with supermodel dude. Is it was just pretty much the only thing I can create. Like, uh, how how do you guys feel of the diversity in the character creation was for for humans in Guild Wars Two? I thought it was uh, way lacking. As someone who spent too much time in character creation, uh, I feel like they could have added a lot more facial options. I'm I'm fine with pretty people i don't think it detracts from my game because i'm not really looking at my character's face for the most time and well you and do the I know personal really story so what you're saying is you want a booty I, slider yeah pardon <laughs> what you're saying is you want a booty slider a booty slider. <laughs> oh like in a can, yeah in a, a sweet can I, ass can I, slider can i slide it to firm and toned <laughs> well no it just i feel like does in your opinion does that have a, a detrimental effect on how you play the game and understand um, the lore no but it, it has a detrimental effect on my interest in the personal story um until i found a solution for my human problem i did not give a flying crap about the character on screen when he was in a personal story well, i don't care I, about my character i care about its interaction with other people right I, what i'm getting at is say when i made a human i wanted to make the retired lieutenant who's just like Ugh, oh yeah, you can't fucking you make centaurs again. Oh my god, I, I want, I want to have the dude who's like the reluctant hero. I want a reluctant hero. In oh, my I, I have a reluctant hero uh, folder. Let me send that to you. Real quick. <laughs> I, I have a reluctant I want, hero. I want an overweight dude who's ha- who's just eaten to like just like just let himself a little bit go. Oh, but yeah, male overweight is the one thing I would love them to be able to allow us to do. Like, yeah, the fact that we just, cannot make a fat guy is really. I want a human modest. who looks like a human. Like I, I know I they look like male, humans in terms so you want a male of what our soldier. Yeah, like I want to. Yeah, I want to yeah. make a. If I want I an make ideal a fat piece of shit who goes out on <laughs> an incredible adventure. Yeah, much, yeah. Like if I wanted, to, if <laughs> I wanted a, the exactly. ideal body shape for my character, I'd make a fucking elf in some game. Like that's exactly. That's, or in this case, a Silvari, because they're basically the or elf human. In this case, sadly, I want to. I want to start out. Fat, and then after yeah. I run around for hours upon hours, I get fit. that would be amazing. Uh, that would cracker, be amazing. cracker uh, in chat, um, he says, "Roll an order if you want a fat guy." They are not fat; they are husky. <laughs> <laughs> they are okay. not fat; they are Thanks. muscular. Um, yeah, dude, I, I, I wanted a, I, I wanted a human because they made humans humans in a lot of ways. That we are, they are. The past, perhaps the, the race with the most character flaws in in that, like, the humans are, a lot of them are just shit. Like, a lot of them just suck. Like, the, there's dudes who you clearly aren't doing their jobs. Especially, like, the guys who are manning the centaur towns. Like, seriously, yeah. you're a scout. How did you not, there's scouts right there. How did you not see that horde of centaurs coming to this, right. like, there's, there's so many things about the humans that fit with how humans are And even are in the life. personal story, it, it's like, a lot of the story is based on, you know, the strife in, in the government. Of, yeah. Um, divinity's reach especially if you and take the noble's path 
Right, exactly. You are dealing with, you know, nobles who are helping bandits, etc. Yeah. And, I don't know, that's interesting, I guess? But I actually thought a, that was they, very they interesting. Found that interesting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I found it... it, it I f- I f- I found that they there got it so close to real in a lot of ways. It, it but felt then they, like a personal story. They pushed it too more else. towards too much towards the perfect. They, they, in my opinion, with the humans, I, I don't want to be pretty. I don't want to be like the, the closest to a human I liked in terms of aesthetics was a dude with the biggest fucking beard I can get and like a cut up face. And I made him a ranger, so he just looks like a fucking lumberjack. No, I, I, that was the closest. I, I will say <laughs> that I believe one of the female uh, human choices is kind of an older looking face. So yeah. I'm hoping that with the expanded options that we get at launch, yeah. that there may be kind of a more, you know, uh, like you said, a grizzled, like older looking guy. Yeah. Uh, but exactly. again, of course, he's still going to have the body of a fucking um, supermodel. So yeah, it's still got to deal with that. Weird. And that, that's my main problem with the humans, which is, which is kind of crazy to say that's my, that is my main problem with the humans, because humans actually are incredibly well executed in this game. It's really hard to do a debate about... Yeah. My main problem with the humans so well is that they aren't ugly enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Make them more ugly. <laughs> um, yeah, I- anyone else have anything to add? Does anyone have any major um, detractions from They are the, the best race, and they will rule over Tyria. And you guys better move out, because that's where it's going to be at. They are the Hopefully. second best race. Um... Well, I guess some people like dogs more than people. Well, no, I guess the I guess they're the third best race because the Savari are pretty fucking good too. Uh, <laughs> all right, you know, you know, I guess you we know what happens now. to plants. They are cultivated by people. You know, like you know those farms. <laughs> they might as well so... be filled with Silvari standing line in line. Uh, so maybe we could send the Silvari to a camp so they can concentrate <laughs> very well. So <laughs> the humans are usually the new race, the up and coming race in fantasy, but and the elves are usually the old race, the diminishing race. But the but arenas kind they're of swap elves. them. They're not elves. Kind of swap them. They're not elves. Yeah, they, they, they are the guild wars analog to elves. Yeah, Rosin and Durin, I guess. What are your opinions on the Silvari? I I think Silvari are cool. You can be a plant. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I love them as a race. I'm I not, actually quite like this. I, their, their starting They're zone to me is okay. Really, my they are really? my I, probably like I the best the looking starting, starting zone. zone in my opinion. I love the starting zone. I, I don't know. To me, okay, I just, it, it didn't grab me. Let's break this down I from first principles. I use mushrooms as as stairs yeah, in their it's starting just zone. Beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. So, Rawson, what are the Silvari as a people? They are they are a race of sentient. Humanoid plants. Um, <laughs> you live, sound, you sound like a crazy the... person. Yeah, I was gonna say that, that would not sell a new person on the Silvari. <laughs> yeah, um. Okay, okay, all right, all right. Let me let me try. They're a race of sentient humanoid plants. How's that? All right, that works. Yeah, we'll go sure. with that. It's that works. All, yeah. all in the delivery. Convinced. Um, anyway, yeah, they they live in the jungle, uh, not too far away from the Asura, and uh, basically their whole zone their whole area their whole way of life is based around basically building things with organic material like instead of a house it's a flower that, <laughs> like that a acts as a roof <laughs> crazy yeah I'd- or a tree or whatever or or fungus it doesn't matter a significant argument could be put towards the Sovari being prettier than humans if you kind of a hippie yeah, if you're hippie. If you can also make some funky-looking Silvari. Yeah. You can. And also, interesting thing about the Silvari, by the way, they're bioluminescent. Absolutely. You so, will, so you're, you're, before you we get into that, light light the dark. before they we get into that, um, I, I just want to I, I learn what I know of the Silvari, because I haven't played the Silvari, because I've been, I've been saving them for launch. They're, they're kind of the, one of the couple of things I've not touched in the betas, so I don't know too much when it comes to the starting areas, and I'll need you guys to fill me in on it, but um, the Silvari are the new racing gears too. They've only, the oldest Silvari is noob, I think you can fill me in this one, is a 25-year-old, right? Yeah. Uh, I thought 23, yeah, 25. 25, yeah. 25. Some, somewhere around there. That's the oldest oh. Silvari in existence. Um, they spawned from this tree called the Pale Tree, uh, and again, uh, it was planted in Guild Wars One by a Guild Wars One character. Yeah, in um, the Ventari, right? Wildlands. I so wait, it was actually was it, so like if you played Guild Ventari Wars One, human? if you played Guild Wars One, like you planted well, this um, tree at the end of Guild Wars One, you see, yeah, you see who planted it. Was a centaur who planted? This oh, okay. Tree. I thought you meant like and your player actually talked to him. Oh, that no. would have that oh, been even no. cooler. No, 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 no. no. But it was pretty cool because um, you were there when crazy. this tree was planted in in the first Guild right. Wars. Um, you see that 
like they peek at it at the end of Eye of the North where you see like that tree sprout or like the little seed sprout. And so they are a very recent race. And what what do you want me to say? Well, oh, there's this one. That's it. So th- <laughs> that, that's it. For they come from a tree. They come from a tree. Um, so oh, so it's kind of like a hi- the tree is like a hive mind sort of. There we like go. A, like the overmind in Starcraft. They are similar to Zerg in physiology and how they work. Um, what do you... You need to explain what? that. You need to explain that. Oh, no, okay. No, no, no. no, 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 no. So, they, they so basically, they, when they you... Are not so all of their mind. experiences are, are passed in through the pale trees, yeah. so where they're from. So each experience, every Silvari learns or anything, it goes back to the ch- pale tree for new and upcoming Silvari to learn about. I think it was when they die, so, but, right? But they, or, they yeah, they once they die, all of the... All their thoughts are, are beamed but, up to the mothership, yeah. essentially. They don't but, even but see they can death still, as something they're scared of. They can still think and act independently. Yeah. Yeah. Not yes. like a hive mind yeah. like the it Zerg. Just, right. They, they, everything they see, feel, and touch goes back to the peltry, though. Well, as and, so basically, and, t- well. and so basically until they're born, uh, probably one of the biggest things here is until they're actually, quote-unquote, born into the, re- the you know, real world, um, they all kind of exist in this, uh, this dream world. Yes, yeah. um, and that is basically that. That is essentially them. That that is the hive mind of the pale tree, and that's where their consciousness the exists. Yeah. Yes. So how they describe it is the dream, which is what the Silvari, yeah, that, Silvaris are, are born fully grown. Like they, they come out of the pale tree fu- fully grown and ready to operate in the world. Um, the tree itself is what gives them everything they need to be able to do that. So they, they have an understanding of language. They have an understanding of what the world is. And that all comes from the dream. So the, the consciousness of the tree, which is spread to its its flowers, it, its its seeds, it, the Silvari themselves. Um, the consciousness of the dream is this gigantic sea. And how the arena net devs describe it is it's as if every Silvari is given a cup from that that entire sea to be them to be their personality so they they don't they're not omniscient like the silvari don't know everything well not, not even omniscient they don't know everything that's in that in the entire they can't collective communicate knowledge. through the, through telepathy or anything well they can to a certain extent but let's not get into that um but that's not like <laughs> okay you know yeah it's, you're right <laughs> yeah it's it's not to do with the um mm-hmm. be the way like the, the silvari themselves come into the world with the the ideologies from the tree and what that means is the tree itself is somewhat sentient and it actually wants to fight. It, it recognizes the dragons as a threat and is actually spawning the Silvaris as a way to fight the dragons. That's how I understand it. It's pretty awesome. Um, so each, so, well, not every Silvari, but a lot of Silvaris are given a kind of like task where they're born with a task. You can kind of select this during the character creation, I think it was. Um, and you fe- And your character feels the need to go out and protect and fight the dragons. Stuff like that is what spawns from the tree like the tree is a really interesting concept and the silvari being so young a race um part of the the whole mentality of how the tree is going to continue to exist is that silvaris as, as you said when they die they transplant or well they they beam all of their thoughts and experiences and stuff back to the tree so the silvaris are continually growing in terms of um complexity and well, all we can do is assume intelligence so it's, it's really interesting to see where the silvari are and where they will go hopefully by the end of the plot i give us two um, uh, uh, new anything to add? Um, so it's the there's Nightmare also Court. like splinter oh, factions in this. Yeah, yeah. Nightmare, that's exactly what I was going to talk about. So Nightmare Court are like the antagonists of the Silvari world. They the are, coolest of all the antagonists um, by they far. Are, they, I want to be a Nightmare Court person because their like armor looks the best. They just look yeah. so cool. <laughs> um, so these are so basically the fundamental principles of silvari are from a tablet or like, not not like an ipad but like a stone tablet that <laughs> no, the, no the it was centaur. totally an ipad the centaur yeah, the ipad put an ipad in the ground with a little solar charger Ooh. to last <laughs> right. the 250 it, years of, like, of the tree yes <laughs> right um basically to, and Do they get three that instilled there? his principles upon the newborn silvari but the nightmare court are a group of silvari who d- reject his teachings and they they they're evil they think like Acts of evil are a good way to understand what life is, or something. Yeah. Like that. So, so yeah, when we talked about is. when we talked about the the Asura, we said that their, their racial thing is kind of being the evil genius, like that's right. or the mad they, scientist. They want to corrupt the pale tree into their thinking, and basically, the, is what. They well, want yeah, exactly. And the, the humans are more like the everyday, or a little bit on the defensive side, and on the last stretch, and kind of fighting to survive. The Silvari are what um, ArenaNet describes as the noblest of the races because they're new. They they and they 
they're pretty much without direction, but the, the what they have is this tablet that Ventari from the first Guild War has left for them. And they read from this, the, the they all essentially use this tablet as pretty much the Ten Commandments. They, they, it essentially outlines how a noble person is to live because the story is there's like a really tragic thing with human that the, I can't believe I'm crossing over, over this way. You should watch the Wooden Potatoes video, but there's a really tragic thing with this human who is Ventari's best friend and Ventari writes out on this tablet, all these things to live a noble life. So the Silvari, when they were Maybe born, the Ten Commandments sort of the kind of thing. Yeah. So the Silvari, when they're born, feel that this tablet is the backbone of their society and how they should act as a race because they had no real direction aside from the dream. So they're given this tablet and a lot of them venerate it. They venerate it as if it was the religious text. They, they really feel that the tablet and its teachings of nobility um, are the way to live. So that's where you get the Silvari going out and helping people as a as a as a core element of their race. But what you have is, as Noob pointed out, Nightmare Corp. And they're the people who said, well, they're not really evil. They are pretty evil. But they're not really evil in that they their stance isn't that um, right. they nobility don't is bad. They think they are evil. They just think, right, yeah, that the best way to understand, you know, like life and stuff like that is by just having doing really terrible shit. No, <laughs> yeah, well, that's not it they, entirely. They hurt the fern dogs. Yeah, <laughs> they're not cool. <laughs> well, I like, like those fern. I, dogs. I think it's more so like not so much like doing evil shit. It's more like in order to to understand life and to to live it like you just. You live with no reservations. No, no, no. They do evil ship. Like, well, they, no, they do. Yeah. We'll, that's we'll what I'm saying, though. Is that, we'll that. That. Where they, that's what I'm it's saying, a though. tournament of how bad you can get. But, no, what I'm saying, <laughs> though, is that I think what it, what it comes down to is living life with no reservations. So they'll do whatever yeah. they feel like they need to do in order to understand that more. And if that means exactly. destroying you know, something in order to, to truly understand right, it, they'll it, do it. It's different from where they're doing everything. They're Not just even simply that. doing bad things. No, no, because the stance of the Nightmare Court and why I think they're the coolest race – well evil faction in Guild Wars 2 is, isn't that isn't necessarily that it's that they think that their race has been enslaved by the tablet they think that the Silvari should have more freedom they should be allowed to do what they want to do rather than being constrained by these these somewhat, yeah, and have their like own Silvari philosophy yeah and and, ha- and and be their own race as, as opposed to being constrained to this like uh, this list really like imagine having to live yourself to the Ten Commandments I've stolen so much in my life. <laughs> but yeah, the, the point That's is... So, so what you're saying is the Nightmare Corps are the atheists... Yeah, you're a bad person. They're the, the Silvari. Atheists. No. Exactly. So... I don't, I wouldn't call it that, but <laughs> I all this virtue that. stuff... It, so the idea is Ultima. fine, but how they're going about it is entirely different. So what their thought is, I don't know how... I don't. I haven't read into it. I've seen this explanation, but it seems like the dumbest idea I've heard. But their idea is, to, in order to free, in inverted commas, the Silvari, they want to corrupt the dream. They want to make Silvari question... Yep, they want to question. corrupt the pale tree. They yeah. want to... They, they want to... Uh, they, they want, they want the Silvari suspicion. to... Yeah, exactly. They want those yeah. Silvari to come out with with their own um, f- like freedom or free will, where they feel yeah. like they feel like the, the the current Silvari do not have free will because the Pale Tree tells them they must follow the, this tablet. And yeah, yeah, that's that's that. Yeah, and exactly. That so they want to corrupt the, the, the Silvari, but the, the the method they want to do that is to in order to, to instill the sense of um, uh, just like the the negative sides of human nature, like again suspicion, all that stuff. They want to corrupt the dream, and again, Silvari beam up in very commas their their consciousness to the dream upon death. And the only way to really contr- corrupt the dream in their eyes is to do like the most fucked up shit to other yeah. Silvari and then kill them. <laughs> they are, bonkers. and I think their their idea behind that is, you know, again, when the Safari is killed, it, it it's it's experiences are uploaded then to the pale tree and all of those Silvari that are still within the dream will will basically experience all of that and so the, the more of these like negative experiences or more so like i guess trying to show the Silvari, those unborn Silvari, like this is what the real like, world give is them actually actual like nightmares yeah um, like, give them nightmares yeah like i think that's yeah exactly like that that definitely is you know probably the premise of the the nightmare court name um, yeah. is to you know corrupt that that dream and make it more of a nightmare and, and show them like this is what the real world is like this you know don't listen to that tablet that's that's fantasy that's you know that's something that you know you're being told to, to follow or whatever but you don't need to and yeah and also real quickly um silent dante just asked in chat uh who's representing the safari i think at this point we've pretty much kind of decided it, <laughs> we all kind of like all the races so all there's the probably races. not gonna be much of a debate here 
Well, it's honestly, we all know it's it's Yo, just the humans fuck that want. Human, human, human. Um, so th- that's that's kind of the the cool side part of the Silvari, and and uh, to give you an idea of what their race is and what their major antagonists are, they're the second best race. So, Noob, what are your favorite elements of this? Like, in terms of like the starting um, area, how do you like the starting city? I, I haven't seen it myself. The starting area is absolutely beautiful. It's the it's very vibrant color wise. It is deep dark colors at the same time, very bright reds, yellows, just beautiful architecture in terms of like it's very natural. It's like these a hollowed out tree would make it's a hippie nice bullshit. Home for Silvari. It's hippie huh? bullshit. Well, I wouldn't call it hippie bullshit. Because <laughs> I, I hippie actually bullshit really, I turned on the Silvari on personally. Like, like honestly, well, no, I don't think it's hippie bullshit because um, what is it called? I whenever I see hippie bullshit, I want to burn everything down. <laughs> um, that said, that said, I would imagine I, for some reason, like you know how in Avatar the, they wanted to cut down that big tree. I'm just thinking of some sort of like human organization wanting to cut down the pale tree. That would be like a fun little mini game, but <laughs> and then and then you can play as a human who yeah. falls in love with a Silvari, right? And then and, and then, then, and then he gets against... like a pa- pod and he turns into a Silvari. Yeah. So oh, Rosin, why? I I just, I just kind of want to bring this back in because I just realized that you're the one who who really wanted to say that Silvari is probably way, what you'd recommend. Why would you recommend Silvari over the other races? Because they're cool plant elves. That's that is literally like the really? main reason. I they they they're neat. They're they're style. They got really awesome armor. If you like armor that you know is yeah. is yeah. organic. Um, they're like aesthetically said, it's, amazing. Yeah, they are. They are the most aesthetically pleasing of the races. Uh, I haven't really done a whole lot of the personal story stuff because. I'm kind of holding off on it, release. Release, so I can't really. It, it's I not a human with like twigs coming out of that. its back. It's like its features are predominantly. It, it its shape looks like a human, but everything is clearly made. Yeah, out of I something I would absolutely organic. agree. Like yeah. like from like a, a tree. from an aesthetic standpoint, they are the clearly original the best. screens of Silvari were kind of awful. It was literally just humans wearing like leaves and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But what they have at Silvari now is completely different, and I think it's a lot better. So, would you guys say, because a bunch, I, I'm taking it that a lot of you guys like the Silvari as a starting, what you'd recommend for someone to start off with, right? Um, so, do you guys think that they, for, for me, my main problem with the Silvari is that they're beautiful. They're, they're, they are, I'd say, have the positives where humans have the negatives. Humans are beautiful in a race, but I feel that's not enough. I think they should be a bit uglier to, to represent what they really are. The Silvari are beautiful, but they also make them... But that's in a different way. Like, they're, they're beautiful in terms of their textures are amazing. They're, 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 plant, they're plant people, essentially, so they're made of leaves and bark, but you can make someone who's Artistically predominantly... Artistically great. Yeah, you can make someone predominantly barky, you can make someone really leafy. That's all absolutely amazing. You can have a mushroom head. Yeah. Um, and they can go in the dark. I want to eat that mushroom head. They can go in the dark, and that's absolutely, absolutely spe- spectacular. But don't you guys feel... My main problem with Silvari, especially when it comes to the armor, and I'll talk about the actual racial armors in a second, Don't once you put an armor on Silvari, they just look like a, a human. You can't really... They're the, the same size as humans. I pretty much... On, on my Silvari, humans. I will pretty much the always best hide the helm. human armor. Yeah, I always have the helmet. Oh, well, yeah. I know why you're Silvari. So, okay, fine. Silvari has probably the coolest hairstyle in the game. They have the the mushroom kind of thing that looks like the. Well, the even even are. without that, like I love their hairstyles in general, just because they are like like we said before, like they're not just humans with leaves on them. Like their features are predominantly made from plant stuff. So, like their hair is like flowers or they, leaves or branches. They un- unlike unlike the old Republic, they actually have unique models for them. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. It's not a human with a some stuff uh, slapped onto the face. So, so the positive side of it is like with Silvari racial armor, and 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 it's important to note that all the races have racial armors. Um, I we haven't really brought it up too far because the human racial armor looks like what would be fitting for a human, and the Asura looks like what would be fitting for an Asura. But when it comes to the Silvari racial armor, it is absolutely spectacular. Durin, yes. <laughs> yeah, they're beautiful. It's, it's yeah, it is some of the best looking armor in the game. Period. Like yeah. even even outside of of their their racial armor, just period, some of the best looking they've done. 
Yeah. You can't see it, but I'm nodding my head right now. <laughs> they, they, right. Their armor, it's because like, human, when you get to top tier heavy armor, for example, it's essentially what the um, Seraph wear, like the human like, bodyguard. The Guardian one is, or the heavy armor is awful. Yeah, it's, well, awful. it, it's, it's, not, well, it's, it's not, not creative, awful, it's just, it's just like a shitty knight's armor. But Silvari, it's this, this thing made of thorns and bark. It looks, oh, it, it looks like you you grew a plant and then you cut off like the giant leaves of it and you put the armor together yourself it yeah. looks really great i don't know um and but and beyond that like my problem is that's where the line ends like you have the silvari stuff and you have the silvari non-racial stuff which looks absolutely spectacular but beyond that you start with this freaking tunic that looks exactly the same as the human's oh, tunic God, yeah yeah that's that was that was extremely terrible like when I first made my Silvari, um, I loved how the model looked and everything, but then seeing the gear on them that was just straight up human gear, I was really hoping that that was just some kind of a yeah. placeholder. Uh, <laughs> just, because, because I mean, Silvari I was like, you know, that and the Sur were the two last races to be shown. And they had sh- you know, shown by, by the model of the Silvari itself that clearly they had put a lot of work into that race. And so I just assumed, okay, well, maybe they went ahead and put the race in because they wanted to get it in since this was, you know, likely, likely the last beta weekend and last chance we'd have to play the game. Turns out I was wrong in that case, um, <laughs> but uh, you know maybe the, the the gear wasn't quite ready, and so that's why they put this on here. But then we've continued to see it over and over and over, over, and, over and, and like we're realizing like no, this is just just they're gonna they're gonna give them fucking human gear, I guess. And I, I can't stand. And again, like because Silvari have the same build and height as humans, you, you kind of I I think a lot of the aesthetic like um, wonder of the Silvari is lost. Um, when you when you put them in the majority of the game's armor, I, I think that Silvari as from aesthetic is so amazing that my main negative of them is you can't show it off much, yeah, especially I mean, in terms that, of like. And, and that's why I said like like I would leave the helm off all the time. I would actually recommend anybody playing Silvari do not show your helm because it's going to be the one um, aspect of the Silvari that can shine through, even yeah, with all that. And armor the bioluminescence, like by, what's what's the use of bioluminescence like if you? Too, in general. Yeah, exactly. Like well, like what yeah. would be great is if they actually like the. What would be the best is if that gear actually just looked unique per uh, race. Um, so, like, the single piece yeah. looked different That's on each of the different races. Well, and 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 I'm gl- kind of glad in some cases that it doesn't happen. Um, or On one hand, I'm glad it doesn't happen because they did that with Terra, and it's really cool, except that you are in the same p- looking piece of gear for a very long time because right. they did model, you know, that piece of gear to look different on every single race, and therefore, just because of, you know, time constraints. They have and, less gear. Yeah, exactly. They have way less gear. So I'm glad they didn't do that in this. I'm glad there is a nice variety of gear, but we're paying for that by having things like Silvari wearing human looking gear. Yeah. And that's the kind of thing, because when you look at Asura, right, this this, this is the re- one of the main reasons I wouldn't recommend someone to start with Silvari. Hey, we're finally getting to a debate. Um, I think that when it comes to the Silvari in general, um, Armor isn't give us to look like they were made for humans because as, as, that's just how fantasy kind of goes. It's, it's even though they may not have been, it feels that way. So you have the heavy armor is looking like, for example, centurion gear, and that's what you associate with humans. Like seeing a Silvari in centurion gear looks pretty odd. And so I feel that like the Silvari is a race without. They have a cultural identity, but they do not have, for the majority of the game, a real aesthetic uh, like um, identity. So you can make a, a logical excuse by saying, you know, they've only been here for 25 years. Yeah. They don't have much of a military-industrial complex. Yep. They're not able to pump out armor and weapons. Yeah. And guess what? Most countries, they don't make weapons on their yeah, own. Yeah, I mean, I'm, imported from other I mean it, could, it could be that they're basically just getting their armor from the humans early on. Yeah. And maybe, and for all we know, maybe as you play through the game, like you'll start getting gear from stuff that maybe looks a little bit more um, fitting for Savar. We don't really know. Um, but Noob does right. have a point there. I mean, they have only been around for 25 years. They haven't really had a lot of time to... They don't have an arms industry. Well, more so even beyond arms industry. Like, they haven't really had, you know, the, the time to, I guess, create fashion. <laughs> except except for their beautiful racial gear, I have to say. Yeah. Um, okay, so they've created one set of fashion in 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one of my major problems with them. Another one is... Um, their major city. So I haven't seen it. I haven't been there myself. It's quite I'm saving beautiful. It it's beautiful, right? But when it comes to yeah. 
comparing it to Divinity's Reach and Rasum, especially Rasum it's, and how it's well it's laid tree. out. I'll I'll say that it's a tree. That's yeah. It is. Yeah. It is a little bit difficult to navigate. Yes, uh, that was a yeah, number one problem with it. I've heard consistently yeah, over and over. It's over difficult again. enough to navigate. But I they also had to felt include, to my death like, in that one. They had to include like fucking elevators and shit just to get around it. Yeah. Exactly. Like, how, how do you guys feel about the design of their cultural city? Oh, I th- it is not the strongest point. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like I will Sorry, say, like, I will say aesthetically, again, it is amazing looking. Like it, it is very, very, very beautiful. You can pretty much turn any direction and, and take a picture, and that could be your wallpaper. Yeah. Um, but right. actually trying to navigate it, like I'm thinking, like long term playing this game and having to go back to that city over and over again, I, I am not looking forward to that at all. Wow. Yeah. Rosen, what, what are you thinking of? Just yeah, basically the same thing as Durin, where it, it's it reminds me of the Dark Elf city from EverQuest One, which was notoriously horrible to navigate. I don't know what image you're putting in my head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, you, you need to describe know, with know, words. That's, that's you need probably... to with words. <laughs> So is it is I, a case I, of like I multiple can't. interlocking pods or is it like, okay, so is it vertical? Like what's the issues with it? It's it's vertical. It's vertical. Yeah, that's, the, that's kind of the main issue. Yeah. The verticality is the biggest issue with that, with that city and, and, and a combination of the verticality and, and how to actually go about traversing that verticality. Like if it was simply yeah. a single spiral going around the middle and you would get off at the different levels, that would actually be way better than the way they did like it. Like the Asuran one. So that's the interesting thing. So Because Asura has a vertical city. Like if you look at the, on the map, yeah. it's a giant floating cube and the it's city's like actually three or four levels or something. Yeah, into the ground. But it's easy to navigate because you can literally just, um, go down the stairway in the center of the city to get to into the levels or do what I do and just jump off the fucking stairway in, in the right angle and get to the level you want to, which is kind of the funnest thing about this, the Sasura uh, starting area. Um, can they, Do you feel like they kind of nailed it with the Asura, but kind of whiffed it with the Solvari in terms of verticality? Yes, absolutely. Because again, like the, the Asura does have kind of that, that central spiral idea, and you kind of get off where you want, whereas with the Solvari, it's, I think there's like, what is there, like two or three different... Um, uh, spiral staircase things that lead up to different levels <laughs> right and oh, then or you oh. can just like find <laughs> well and then you, you can like find an elevator but and does that you, elevator you fall off you, you, you get on you the die. you get on the elevator from like the ground level and like it takes you up I, I think it's like to the third level instead so if you wanted to go to the second right. level you want to take the spiral staircase instead or you take the elevator up to the third and come down like it's it's just totally fucked so this kind of comes back to my 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 prop one of my problems with the Savari in that I complain that it's hippie bullshit because how much do you feel that their design because what what the arena does is they have a very deep commitment to their ideas and art styles in that um, they are fine with trying to find alternative ways of doing things for example navigating a city um like elevators being replaced with I think what they the leaves right that they, they move up and down or some shit they're like pods basically. Yeah, and like things like that to to kind of um, self justify their design. So, for example, they want to make a city in terms of Silvari. They don't want it to look like a palette swap from the humans. They want it to be like a, a, nat- a natural city which emphasizes the strengths of the Silvari. That's that's kind of how ReaderNet works. How do you guys feel? Like, do you feel like they their um, attachment to the organic feeling of a city, for example, looking as if it had been grown rather than built, kind of got in the way of the, the design of the city in the first place? Yes, yes absolutely. The, the visuals have come into conflict with the, you know, just the base, you know, usability of the city. Right. The Where they placed the vendors and everything, getting to the vendors, it was kind of difficult. Yeah, like I feel right. like they... Like, it, it, looks, it looks great, don't get me wrong, but it it's not a good hub city where you want to be efficient. Yeah, exactly. Like farming like, and then going there would not be the funnest thing ever. Like that's what I was saying earlier. Like, you know, it's aesthetically it looks great. Like you, you can turn around and take a screenshot or whatever. It looks, it looks great. But the problem is that, is that I think they just, they were way too stubborn with, with trying to keep with that look and with the, the idea of the tree being kind of, or the, or the verticality of the city being kind of representative of the tree and kind of being made of the tree or whatever. Um, and, at some point, completely lost the idea of um, making it. This is a hub city. Of, well, of making it, you know, of, of making gameplay matter. I, I think for them, the aesthetic right. mattered more than gameplay, and that's where it really kind of kills the the use of that city. Right. 
And so, so do you, it's, it's an interesting thing because like my, my problems all stem from the aesthetics of the race, the design of their, their cultural city, but I don't really have too many problems with the rest of it. Like, for example, I haven't been to um, the, their, their main city, so I don't really know how the dynamics uh, voice acting is, for example. Like, how, how, do you guys feel like the dynamic voice acting or like, do you think they've named, nailed the Silvari as a, as a race in terms of like just how they interact with one another? With one another? Uh, I I did not. I'll be honest. I did not hear much voice acting. Not because there wasn't, but just I wasn't really focusing on that because yeah, I was, was just mostly running around fighting. Stuff. Yeah, same here. I pr- I pretty much kind of tuned it out. Yeah. I mean, most right, of it cool. was. I was also on Mumble while I was playing it. So I, for, yeah, for for the Silvari though, uh, what they say is pretty much a lot of a lot of what you would expect from a race of plant people, which is everything is sort of some naturey. <laughs> Reference. Really, oh, I, I had actually Even heard the dialogue opposite. is the best. I, I had heard really? that one of the one of the nice things about them was the fact that they they didn't go all all crazy tree hugger hippie with their. Um, oh, it wasn't that? Dialogue. But like their um, some of the terminologies are, are, is based on like piece of nature. For example, like, I, w- mm. I wouldn't be able to give you an example off the top of my head. But for example, yeah. instead of saying fuck, maybe they say like dirt leaf. I don't know. So, so it's shit <laughs> like that. Like they they, they say. They have their phrase, their their terminologies and phrasing is just a little bit more naturey. And if you like me, and you're more of like a, an engineer kind of guy who who likes construction, like the human city fits me because it looks like a human city. It makes sense. There's straight streets. It, 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 it everything's relatively like almost circular in nature, but still grid light well, within the, the circle. Well, the tank's got to roll somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But for, when it comes to the Silvari, it just it just. I don't, I don't I hippie shit is the best thing I can say. It, it just it just <laughs> comes off as absolute fucking. Hippie. Well, and, I don't think it's as much hippie as. I don't know. Well, and, and uh, it, it, it's nice. Montanor in in chat also brought up a good point too. The in town waypoints in their city are fucking atrocious. <laughs> it's it, 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 yeah, part of it, part of the problem with that. I think and I think maybe that can stem somewhat to the Asura as well. Is with Divinity's Reach, it's fairly easy to um, understand where a waypoint is because you pretty much just have ground level, upper level. And that's that's pretty right. much it. And and if it's if it's not on the level you're on, it's kind of transparent. Um, with Radisum and and I'm blanking on what the uh, the city for the Silvari is called. Um, um, the pale or the grove. The grove. Okay. The grove. Uh, with those two um, cities, because there is so much verticality, there are you know more than two levels. It can be really hard to know where a waypoint's at. And then on top of it with the Silvari is they're also just terribly placed. Like, they're not placed in strategic places. Yep. You go to D- Divinity's Reach, there is a waypoint just outside the bank and trading stuff. There's a yeah. waypoint just outside the... The, um, the Char one the does palace really well or whatever. Well. Like, they make sense and of where they're at. Those are perfect. Yeah, they make right. sense of where they're at with the Silvari. I don't feel like they really make as much sense on their placements. And they're also trying to, hard to try to figure out what, what level they're even on. <laughs> yeah. And well, that's the problem I have with the sewer area as well. But I'd I'd say for that it kind you kind of sort it out. The problem is getting between the waypoint and the thing you're looking for, which can kind of I've, I've heard can be a bit of a uh, interesting thing in the Silvari city. Let's just say, um, yeah. Rosen, I, I, we spent a long time with the negatives of Silvari, and I think but I think there's a bunch of positives for this our Silvari as well. Like for example. I assume I don't want to put words in your mouth, so I'll let you agree with me or not. I would say that the Silvari are much like the uh, Mesmers in Guild Wars Two, in that if you want to see something different or start with something different, you'd recommend the Silvari because they are pretty unique. What, what do you what do you say to that? Yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, it's just it's the coolest. Like, like, like we it said, looks yeah, the yeah. They, they're, they're certainly they they would be the most unique. I would say like your Norns. You know, you've probably seen that same aesthetic in Skyrim for the Norns. Uh, you've seen the same stuff for the humans. Uh, so Asura is new, I guess. Well, to some extent, you've yeah. seen the Asura because if you've played, you know, a gnome like uh, race, like it, like yeah. Asura can very easily be and- compa- compared to the gnomes in WoW. In terms no. of their, in terms yeah, of their, their, their well, technological, giant buildings? technological inv- advancements, um, you know, big, they, they build everything big to compensate for their size. <laughs> um, so, I mean, there, there are definitely comparisons, but yeah, the Silvari, you could compare them to elves, but because they are kind of the new race, like you said earlier, um, that brings kind of a, a new, like interesting twist, uh, to that style of character. Right. Right. Very curious. Yeah. 
So, so yeah, that's that's. I would say that's pretty cool. If you want to start with something new, if if, if I had to recommend, the thing is with the humans and Asura, we're all kind of in agreement that pretty, except for maybe Ross in terms of aesthetics, are pretty awesome races. And I, I would happily recommend anyone start with either of those two, which is why I haven't really yeah. come up with many negatives. But, but really, recommend I would, humans. I would actually say with the Silvari personally, um, I would be like the opposite as Rawson is with the Asura. I would say, you know, if, if you really want to start a Silvari, like I, I would not, you know go for it they're fucking awesome they're really cool they look awesome they you know their animation is actually really good too um but i would say start a silvari and then immediately go to lion's Re- lion's arch and pick another city <laughs> oh no no i disagree like their their starting area like forgetting the grove is absolutely beautiful so would, aside from aesthetics if you wanted how do you guys nice feel looking. that the because we, we, we've gone we've oh, i ran into the nightmare over court over there, right? and that's a good reason to stay there yeah so how do you guys <laughs> feel that the starting area is in terms of dynamic events and actual play style there's a cool like really cool subterfuge event where you have to go into like a like a gathering a nightmare court gathering and you dress up as a nightmare court and you go around talking to the recruits and freeing dogs and stuff like that and that was really fun oh, yeah that was that was an interesting one and the there's this safari. were you did you see that like huge floating rocks that you that was like yes the yes that in is fact, amazing I, I climbed up on a lot of those yeah. floating rocks it's, it's fun it's amazing it's quite amazing i um, found a shortcut that way yeah, I I just think so. How about the, the zone dynamic? So do you, do you say the dynamic zone. events are like varied in the, in their structure, or did, did, did mm. would it would it maintain interestingness outside from the aesthetics? Dynamic events very much moved me around the map in the Silvari zone. There, I found a lot of moving dynamic events. So like uh, protecting a person while they moved around, right. getting from point A to point B, and that it's definitely a good way of finding new areas and exploring. See, and, I. For me, it was kind of. I mean, it's not that they didn't move me around, but I think I might have. I might have done two. Like they just weren't. They, <laughs> like they just they weren't spawning in the areas that I was doing the renowned hearts for. Like I, I right. I, I felt like they were they were severely lacking in uh, dynamic events, and maybe I, maybe I it was no just that I was kind of following the the renowned hearts from one to the next, and so I wasn't kind of going off the beaten path too much. But I feel like that's that's what the dynamic events are supposed to do. Is is if nothing else, they either lead you off the beaten path or they lead you through the renowned hearts. And I didn't feel like theirs were doing either of those. I, when I did, because I kind of dipped into the Silvari starter area from my with my Asura. I, I didn't go too far deep because I didn't want to see too much of it. But I felt that with the human, as we said earlier. Um, one of the, the driving forces in the dynamic events is that the hearts are spaced in such a way and the dynamic events move in such a way that it all feels like kind of organic and natural in how you move to the entire zone. And the Asura is somewhat of the same thing with a bit more interestingness in terms of actual um, what you're doing in the dynamic events, but less in terms of structure. It's not structured just as quite as well as the humans. But when it comes to the Silvari one, what I felt was the dynamic events were kind of pulling me in opposite directions and the hearts as well. Like they didn't feel like a flow through the area. I kind of went one way, found one dynamic event and then another one would go, would suddenly spawn back where I was and have to go backwards. I I did not have that problem. Right. Like I I constantly felt like I was going in one direction and that was away from the main area. I think it might be interesting because I could have, it's because I, it may have been because I entered it up to the north where it, w- it would be like towards the end of the area rather than towards the start. Maybe oh, and, and it's like repeating in, in a circle, okay. Yeah, so. it, could, it could have been that. Duran, did, did you... What were your overall thoughts of the Savari to- starter area in terms of like just flow and that kind of stuff? I felt like the flow was probably the worst I had played, period. Um, oh, you must have just had bad luck. Well, no, like, I mean, like I, I found a flow, but I had to find the flow. The, the flow didn't leave oh, yeah. me it like, didn't, it, like it should have. Yeah. Like I, I, I could tell I, I, there was lots and lots of me pulling up the map and seeing where the next renowned heart was and heading that direction, um, as opposed right. to the way it should be, which is I do this renowned heart, and maybe from here I can either see the next renowned heart or it kind of leads me there, or there's a dynamic event that leads me there. Noob, are you okay? Or are you in like a okay? <laughs> Getting some what? crazy feedback on your mic. Um, yeah, go on. Oh, <laughs> 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 like listening to the Inception, Inception soundtrack over there or something. Um, but like. Yeah, like it felt like there wasn't enough direction in in the way the uh, the area was laid out. I also felt like in a lot of cases, it was just very boring. Like it, it just, none of it really hooked me to continue. playing How much of that at was all. the forest aesthetic, though? None. It was what I was doing. Okay. 
Really? Like what I was so doing really? just give wasn't us some examples. I, I quite Well, don't it. go, don't spoil too much, but give us uh, an example of why you thought it didn't quite nail it. Because for the human starting area, someone could, some people could say it's it's boring in that for the first thing you're doing, you're generally helping a farmer and you're like, it's, it's kind of cool. You're doing very human things, yeah. Yeah. And, and so it can be boring, but I, I thought they, they nailed it in, in different ways, which I won't go into too much. But so for the solar area, what, what would you say that it didn't nail it? What What missed for you? I don't, I, you know, I don't even know that I could actually like nail it down to a single thing or like even, even That's really worse. Well, or even recall like an event that I particularly didn't like because it was just all so fucking forgettable for me. Yeah. Like, I, I'd forgotten what I had done after I did it. Exactly. Because when, when people recall negative parts is because usually they recall positive parts as well. I, I felt kind of the same yeah. thing that when I, when I, the, the Safari area, it just kind of felt all the, same. There's not. There's nothing. Yeah. Really, there was. There was nothing, nothing positive out. I can say about that zone. Really. Nothing stood out. At least to me, I oh. didn't find it as negative as Durin that, did. But I, I. I found it pretty. Well, we'll defend it then. So, so like the only thing I can say, say that really stood okay, out to so, me was the the one where you had to grab like the that was like mushrooms or something, and like you had to ma- make yourself big in order to move the boulders to get that's the pretty cool. the things to spawn. Oh, except yeah, that, yeah. that was, that yeah, was yeah, awesome. fucking like eighty yeah, percent of the time it made me small instead. And so I was just getting fucking irritated yeah, because I couldn't chance. do the goddamn yeah, quest. Yeah, it's a random chance. Right, but the random seemed to be way heavier on the the small side, and when you're small, you basically right, can't but, do anything. But it, it's RNG's no, always you lame. you crawl into the holes and then yeah. you, you take it out. See, I, I didn't That's I didn't see any holes there. at all. Really? No. What? They were all over what? the place. They were all over the. Again, I think that a lot of that comes down really to know. no direction. Like there may have been some really neat things you could have done, spider holes. but there was there was nothing it's that directed you. It's a single cave. I mean, it's not like. Unless you were well, that, new, that new, make what, sense without the spoiling too much, because I, I can say that the Nightmare Court I fought in this area were awesome, both in terms of their style, because they kind of play a little bit more like humans do in inverted commas, like that they or bandits do, that they are, are, are good in their assaults, they can do a significant amount of damage, they can be difficult, but they also like move with you, they move faster than some of the, or well, they, they felt like they were just a bit more organic and enemy so they're, they're pretty good in terms of gameplay um that was the nightmare court though like when it comes to like their the wildlife in the area i was rather unimpressed um so what would you say there was a lot of spiders there's a lot of bugs yes. i think spiders there's a lot of insects yeah, yeah so i would make that make sense in a jungle um, in terms I mean, of the I actual see, like dragons coming in gameplay dynamic <laughs> events like what, what stood out to you in the positive sense new um there see the my favorite one was probably either um, I, it was defending. It was, I, I, for some reason I like just moving around and like defending a target. So renown quest wise, the night court one was my favorite, but the, uh, what is it called? Dynamic event was there's basically this guy and you have to protect him. It's an Asura, of course, <laughs> who's running around and delivering supplies. He makes a lot of witty remarks. It's funny. Um, and it's a That's great way cool. to get and explore the map. Is what is I it the Asura from it, the it book? It got me from one end oh, of that, the map. That, um, is no. the Asura from that, well, I, that website thing? I don't thing? think so. Right. No, no, I don't think so. That was um, that one. I really like the um, one Durin didn't like for some reason. <laughs> um, there were there are a lot of holes you could go into, and I found <laughs> you, you so, can either so you lift found, holders. Oh, or, oh, uh, what about what about the one where you're uh, fighting that that giant crab beast thing? Oh yeah, the, the giant crab beast. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that, that was one. Awesome. I've heard that dynamic event. I've heard good things about yeah. that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that, that didn't, I didn't see that one. Yeah. Okay. It, it was underwater. <laughs> I, I, never, I never found an underwater area. Oh what? my god, really? There's a huge... On the east side of that starting zone... Yeah, it's, it's straight up. humongously out. underwater. I, I, th- I think this, um, this goes also, back to the whole, like, the game doesn't direct you where the shit... Be- or that area doesn't direct I, you where the shit, because I never found right, that area right. at all. Maybe I'm weird, because I, I personally, I really love to just explore games. I mean, right. I, Which is I fucking love Metroidvania games uh, for that reason. Well, yeah, I um, I understand that, but I but, think that... But there was there was one there was one chain where I, I rescued one of those, um, what are they called? The, the frog the dogs, people. The, oh, the, the, frog. the Hecates. Yeah, okay. The Hecates. I rescued one Hecate from a bunch of crate, of, you know, those horrible Naga mm. things, led her over to her village... And then did some stuff, uh, did another you know event to uh, to actually become friendly with the village because normally they were yellow. And after we did the event, they suddenly became green oh, that's cool. to Whoa. us. That's pretty that's awesome. Cool. Yeah, yeah. It's and a lot of this stuff was uh, was underwater during this part. Like if you go to the east side of that map, just a lo- pretty much all that stuff is going to be involving the that's water. That's pretty awesome. Oh, there's also the um the organ. Uh, uh, if I you did go, not run if you go. 
Oh, if you go underwater, uh, you can find yourself with a bunch of like uh Oh yeah, like, I saw some video like, of that. Like like coral coral tubes, and it you can play them, and oh, wow. it's a fucking pipe organ. Well, and if you play a certain going. song, like it'll give a like area wide buff to everybody. Wow, yeah. but yes, it, that, that, it sounds like it's awesome. So, what do you guys think about the mix? Durin well, had as a salty Durin's not the first one I've heard, though. It seems like Savari's gotten a mixed. Well, and, like, yeah, um, and, and like I'm, background. I'm willing to, I'm willing to give it another shot. Um, but I was, I, I, I was playing this probably a bit differently than a lot of people do. A lot of people, I mean, like, like you said, Ross, and like you tend to enjoy exploring, and that's fine. But where I was approaching all of these starting zones was, I was approaching it as just going in and letting the game lead me through and seeing how well that is done because that's that's probably the biggest thing that matters in a starting zone in a game is how 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 well it's all laid out and and how well the the no. quests work together and everything it is because that that's actually what le- that, that, that's I mean, what led the thing is i i did exactly that Duran, and i didn't have a problem with getting led to into different places well, what I was going to say is that's that's exactly what led to them realizing they needed to rework some of the starting zones of the, Nor- the Norn especially um, was, you know, people going through and playing it the way that you would expect to play and realizing that things were just overtuned, undertuned. Um, they they changed around the way some of the renowned hearts were and, and created kind of a better pathing through those zones. And they might have even done so for the Savari because that that uh, when that happened was, I believe, after Beta Weekend 3, which was when I played the Savari. Um, so it could be that it, maybe it's better now, and I'll, I'll, I'll be willing to give it another shot and see. But going into Beta Weekend 3 um, and, and playing through that the way that I did, like it just there was no direction or no clear-cut right. direction on where it was going to lead you. Well, that, that can all know, change man. as I, well. I, like it's, 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 it's important that we don't emphasize that too. Well, it's, okay, for the human and Asura area, I emphasize it a lot because it's already there. It already feels really dynamic and really awesome. I don't want to emphasize the negative side of the Silvari area too much because that could be tuned between now and release. We are talking about pre-release yeah. kind of stuff. Hey, hey, guys, guys. What? In two weeks, we're going to be playing Guild Wars. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. For realsies. Yay. For realsies. No, no weekend beta, no stress test. So, no. I, I guess Actually, thir- of, 13 we're, days, 2 hours, 36 minutes, and 53 seconds. <laughs> Fuck. Oh God. I'm just I'm saying this time in two weeks we will be playing. <laughs> Assuming that yeah, it doesn't uh, fucking well, blow you up might, or anything. You might not. You might not, but you know, if you if you die or something. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> um, Bringing the cynicism back to the podcast. Thanks, Ross. It's kind of cool because <laughs> no problem. Like last week, where we started with the elementalist, and we were all pretty saying. happy with it, except for like some descending appearance from Noob. Um, and, and so and so shut your mind, face. And, shut your face. We got we kind of really positive about the Asura and um, human, but it, it was kind of starting to get into the races now that are a little bit more mixed. So Silvari, obviously, Durin had a little bit of a different opinion than um, Noob, and I, I personally have some problems with the aesthetics of them. Uh, but it, I would have to say that they're probably the second most pretty race in Guild Wars 2 after the humans. Yeah. And they're the second best? Um, no, I'd, I'd give that to Asura. But I, I want to I move on to the other races of Guild Wars 2 and I'll start no, 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 no. with the Char. Okay, go ahead. Um, so, okay, so what experiences do you guys have with the Char? I, I, I kind of want to know why you guys don't like I, them first. I think domesticated I, I like kitty them. cats. I like them. I, okay. I, I actually, yeah. the Char, like, like so I had no interest in Guild Wars 2 for, like, I'm, I'm not one of those people like you guys are who have been anticipating this game for all these years. I had zero interest in this game whatsoever. Um, and right. probably in the weeks leading up to, like, maybe a week or two leading up to Beta Weekend 1, um, I had started just kind of randomly, because I'm unemployed and have a lot of free time on my hands, uh, <laughs> checking out some of the uh, YouTube videos of um, Guild Wars 2 that, like, Total Biscuit was posting, and I think it's the cast videos as well. Uh, and, and the combat looked really interesting. And actually, the char themselves, I like the animations they had on them. Um, they, they looked real smooth. I, 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 they were actually kind of what drew me into the game and, and kind of made me want to check it out. And then when I went and actually played one, I had zero fucking interest in ever playing a char. Really? Uh, wow. So why that's so? some strong why opinion. So? They just, I don't, I, and again, this is probably some, somewhat comes from you know me not having any kind of an affinity to the the lore or anything but they just seem kind of boring <laughs> well okay so th- we'll take that as a subjective opinion new new barama what are your opinions on as as a as a blinded ca- uh fanboy it, it is the concept of playing a char for people who've played the original guild wars is sort of crazy considering they're like in the prophecies campaign the primary antagonists of humans you know you are fighting off yes. the char 
And now that you're playing as a char, that's pretty crazy. And the fact that the setting is where the human uh, kingdom as Ascalon was. Right. Um, that's for a person who likes lore from the original Guild Wars, that is very, very crazy. So uh, I think why, why, wouldn't, why cool. wouldn't you recommend it to someone starting off, though? Uh, it's not that I wouldn't recommend it. Okay. I would just prefer people playing human or Silvari or etc. Okay. Um, it just the it doesn't lack any. It, I mean, it lacks distinct differences or like benefits from other. Uh, what is it called? Races. Races. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Um, outside the fact that Racist. it's home to. A- <laughs> Outside the fact that it's home to Ascalon Catacombs, um, which is... Uh, is it the first accessible dungeon? Uh, um, yes. Level 30 yeah. is the first then, dungeon. Yes. Okay. Level 31. I did not find... There were a couple of crypts and, like, mini dungeons. I did not find the zones particularly eye-catchy. Or, okay. yeah, catching right. my attention. Rosen? Um It's a lot of go and kill these ghosts. Yeah, That's what? true. I, I, yeah, I, th- I think that was actually my biggest or? problem, too, was, was the zones. Like, right. more than the race themselves. Interesting. My, I really, I didn't the have home, a problem. The home I area know, looks like, really cool as well. I like though. the char stuff, and I, I definitely think the uh, running animations are cool. <laughs> oh, I get there. Well, I, I also, I mean, I mean, there's their starting zone, which is actually what I played the most of with that uh, char mesmer mm-hmm. of mine, and that 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 character totally sold me on playing a mesmer come release. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, uh, but then again, I mean, I really like Guild Wars One, so I may be biased because you know I'm going yeah, into right. I'm going into something which has so many direct ties to the events of Guild Wars One. Uh, like that dungeon it, is full of Guild Wars One references. Yeah, exactly. It's it is a it is a direct continuation of the starting events of the first Guild Wars. Yeah. And so, so I'm, I'm in an interesting situation because I'm personally a human fanboy and I'll be playing a human at launch, but I really did want to find a position for myself where I could definitely recommend the char to someone um, starting out. And I happily found that I, I found one because, all right, so my first experience with the char is I want, I played a char second because I thought I would never roll one because I'm a human guy. The first Guild Wars is all about humans versus the char. Well, it starts off that way. And... I just felt like it was almost like being a traitor to my character in the first Guild Wars by playing a char in this game. Like, it, it just didn't feel right. Um, but when I made a char, a couple of things really come together. So, for one, their race is kind of really play, speaks to me as a person because I'm an engineer, right? I, that, that's my uh, chosen profession in life. So, sup? So, um, and when you walk into the char city, they have the most, one of the most bad, like, if, if you had to rate the cities in terms of badassery, Char is number one by, by a Wait, long Wait, I forget. Margin. What kind of engineer were you? Um, aeronautical. So okay. the, the, char, the char area, you walk in and it's just fucking metal. There's metel everywhere. Yep. The, the ground is like really interesting, intricately, beautifully carved steel. The, the, the ground... The ground was like cogs. Yeah, and in some in some areas it's cogs, and some areas it's like these plates with like really or, like ornate kind it's of. It's like they just did like some sort of industrial revolution. There's like factories with, or there's not. Aren't there smokestacks? I feel like there are. Smoke I'm not sure yes. there's smokestacks. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, I'm smokestacks pretty sure there are. with with like smoke flowing out of them. Yeah, it is. It is the ver- It's very unique. Yeah, it's, it's the city. It's be- well, Dur- during it, you haven't you haven't really weighed weighed in here. How do you feel about the Char as a city? I actually think the Char city is really really cool and especially I, and it's really efficient for crafting yeah because There's well it's, it's really efficient in general district. it's really interesting how the human approach a circular city and how the child approaches a circular city because there, there's various, there's a lot of like equivalency between two because both cities are essentially circles the human is um it's, it's also circular in nature and the they both are divides districts to so charge has a a crafting district and a banking district and stuff like that um also but a military district which is quite a bit larger than the humans military district and and all the elements of it that make it kind of unique in terms of just overall design but then you actually look at like how each approaches their city the char feels like it's a kind of like a war camp it, it feel it feels like a war camp there, there's a like a military camp yeah, yeah it, it feels very military there's definitely like um 
there's no walls between things. There, there, there are a bunch of small structures which are interconnected in many ways for a very efficient movement between them. Whereas human feels more organic, more like the city of London, for example, where the streets are kind of wonky in some areas. There's a bunch of houses. Like there's, there's, there's like there's stuff in your way when you when you're walking places. There's always yeah, small like, alleyways that fit, f- uh, feed into like large roads. Yeah, and, like and there's, there's there's like compared to the trial where, where a lot of the cities actually open space. Uh, yeah, it is. It is getting late, and, and I'll be fine. You actually have to tap out, Wilson. But I do want to at least discuss both okay. both of the final races. Um, so yeah, the the, the char area is actually really cool. So Durin, coming back to you, what are your thoughts on the char? Have you have you seen the char? Have you seen the Black Citadel? Uh, I've seen a little bit of it. I didn't do a lot of running around. I basically ran through it and straight out to the um, the zone. Um, right. But from again from an aesthetic point, it looks cool artistically like i i again like i I really like the uh the painterly look of the game and it it really shines in that city a lot um i think my only my my biggest issue really is not a a fault of the char or really of arena net it's um i was never a big fan of the orcs in wow (laughs) they do feel very me they remind me very very much of the orcs and so i think that's one of the other reasons why i just kind of they kind of fell out of favor for me right and it's the whole noble savage aesthetic. Yeah, yeah. Like, especially the, on the, the like the savage and honor and all. Like it just felt very, very orky, and it's, that just yeah. And it's, it's interesting. It, we, we should definitely touch upon that right now. So the char, like we've talked about, the humans are all about being pretty much balanced. The 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 asura are the mad scientists, and the Silvari are the very noble kind of creatures. Like just in terms of nobility and curiosity, I, we didn't. I don't think we did a good enough job to talk about that curiosity. But anyway, Silvari is all about nobility and curiosity. The char is kind of it's nobility, but different kind of nobility. It's kind of nobility for the char. It's for the furtherment of the chars, for the furtherment of your war band. It's it's all very communal. Yep. It, it's it's again like um it's the difference between a group of explorers. It's, it's like a warlike tribe. It's like a tribal it's system. Very, yeah, it's, organized into bigger groups. Exactly. And then there's there's three distinct factions. You you have military pride. Yes, yeah, Alan Dante. Um, the, the, you have three different factions. You have what was it? The 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 shadow or it was the no the the Iron Legion, the, Iron the Legion? Blood Legion, the Flame Legion, and the uh. What am I? I'm missing. I'm blanking on the Black last Legion. one. Exactly. Flame Legion are the bad guys. The Flame Legion are the bad guys. Wait, we have the Iron Legion. You have the Blood Legion, and then you have yeah. like the Shadow uh, Legion or something. No, no, no. Either way, you have three legions which right. make up Char culture. <laughs> Ash Legion. Hey, high five. Um, oh, there we go. So you have three me- me- regions that make up Char culture, and those are pretty much the only real subdivision in the Char. And instead of them working against one another, you kind of feel like they're working. They have rival, like positive rivalries with one another. They all want to yeah. further the char even more. But there's a lot about the char that's really interesting from a social dynamic because, because the standpoint because they do really feel like a pride. They are cat people. I have to say that, um, and which is kind of cool if you do a slap. It, they're stuff. not divided into like you know nuclear families where you have oh it's a family group. They they their loyalty belongs to their war band. Yeah. So like smaller groups within the legion. Well, there's, there's so a lot like, of it that just that has equivalencies to real life nature or na- for cats. Like yeah. they have a pride kind of system where like they all well not not in that there's one leader or anything like that, not or the women do all the work or anything like that. It's more like everyone raises everyone else. Well, the kids are raised together in like mini war bands, and then they're all subdivided across their legions but in the end like everything's kind of communal rather than everyone being subdivided there's, there's a lot of like really cool right. elements to the char as a people but if you had to describe them in terms of um their racial you know feeling the fe- what the race is it's all about like self-pride and kicking ass that's the char yeah. that, that that's pretty much where i put the char at it's kind of weird because at like a lower level it's some sort of like ragtag group of people like soldiers yeah but it's like very organized and regimented you know it's like very roman system like legates uh centurions and everything yeah um it, it's quite cool just looking at some of that stuff yeah alone I found so, so that really like yeah if, if that if that intrigues you or if that's if that's kind of what you think your character in guilds 2 would be like the char really does sit it uh, do it really well because they don't they're not yep. orcs in the lord of the rings sense they're definitely 
they have, there is depth to the Char character, especially if you read the books. Ritlock is one of the deepest characters in the book. Um, he, he, they do have a sense of like they don't like the humans, but they are willing to to party with anyone if it achieves the end right, goal. Because the Char were like the ones who were originally in Tyria when before the humans came along, and it was like even though like Char are made out as bad guys, it was they were here first. Yeah, exactly. Like a lot of the Char is. Because you, you hate them towards Guild Wars, and that's a really good point. Like, yep. The background of the Char is that they are actually the race that has taken everything back. They're kind of the human role yep. in a lot of other cases. Like in, in alien movies, for example, where the aliens invade, in this case the humans, the Char get pushed aside, and then they pre- pretty much like lead a resistance movement and take back what yep. was once theirs. It's really cool. Like, so you're saying in Guild Wars down. 1, you were actually playing as the bad guys the whole time? Yeah, it turns out you were bad guys the whole time. That, that's right. actually true in, in a lot of ways. Um, so that's, that's one element. Well, actually, of the you help you help the you help them out at the end. yeah at the end. Um, and I the noise. Humans redeem. I, I love the, I love humans in Guild Wars because they are like that element of they're not perfect, and I like that. Anyway, so that's like look how fucked up Ascalon. Yeah, is. like King Adelbert. And that's what up. I'm going to go towards. So <laughs> a lot of people would say humans are a good place to start for people who play the first Guild Wars. But I would actually argue that the Char are probably oh, yeah, f- better. for the people who've played the first Guild Wars. Yeah. You would get immense enjoyment out of playing the Char in just seeing references, just the same places. It's like, holy crap, I'm a Char running around in what was Ascalon. Well, and not, yeah. ju- not just that, but, <laughs> well, not just that, but I feel, like, that I feel like in a lot of cases, you would probably get a lot of um, background on the events that you played through in the first game, but from the right. other side. That pe- other people would not get, yeah. Yeah. And just straight up, when, when I saw the wall of Ascalon or what's left of it, I got shivers. Yeah. I, it is like the Grey Wall of Ascalon. It is like now I'm running around doing a jumping puzzle for <laughs> now. It's infested with harpies. <laughs> yeah, um, and also the Char have a pretty interestingly because di- my major distraction for the Char, and I, I, want, I want to go back into that because there are definitely positive and negatives of the Char, and there's reasons I'd probably personally recommend the Asura or human more over the Char. One of my major distractions from the Char is brown. Yes. The color. Yeah, it's so brown. Um, yeah. Even the ground, it's not green grass, think, it's not green plains, it's like brown. I think somebody in chat actually mentioned that it was like the Gears of War type race for Guild Wars 2. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a lot of it is done in that, like, the char... Ascalon was seared, and what that means is it was essentially burned to the ground, as it sounds. So a lot of the vegetation is not grown back. Like you're seeing scraggly, like kind of shit coming back nowadays. Um, a lot of the char is these plain kind of areas, which is still pretty much north and south of the Great Northern Wall. Is still pr- everyone's everything's pretty desolate, and it kind of looks brown. Is a lot of what you'll be seeing if you're if yeah. You're and again, a lot of again that was that was another issue I had with with going through the char stuff too. Is again like I got fucking flashbacks to the barons and wow and i was like no 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 yeah. i don't have to do this <laughs> <laughs> um and a lot of it is interesting because within that brown you see the char coming back like you see these, these really cool metal constructions these interesting towers with like sniper turrets at the top of them and like really cool things i'm just like really wondering what you know the char homelands were like if they were like really lush forests yeah in the north what what they've become like have they industrialized that place or is it just still like nice forest it's a good question that's just a fantastic question because i wonder if you I see that in it was too because you, you see where yep. the char's now main city with black citadel is it a city is it their main what city their or is, is their homeland still i i, I would their uh they made it their capital is all i know there you go so it's it's really interesting to see where the char will go but you do have the element of unlike silvari and asura even and the humans where you you don't really have too much in the way of like um visual boringness like there's always something interesting to see especially with the humans with those, those wonderful sweeping vistas um you don't get that much i guess char. it's mostly ruins that you come across as playing char yeah just destroyed you know signs of civilization exactly collapsed walls yeah it's, all, it's almost like post-apocalyptic you, you, it's almost post-apocalyptic yeah. um, except you have giant cats running around <laughs> <laughs> Mm-hmm. So let's talk about the char um, well, aesthetically. We don't know what we don't. Go ahead. We don't know what might happen in the yeah, future. It reminds yeah. me of like fists of the North Star. They're just <laughs> driving around in motorcycles. Oh yeah, the giant motorbikes cool. and shit. And it's, yeah, it's, and their um, siege weapons are these like Whoa. giant. Oh. Yeah, it, it's pretty cool. But um, Dead. let's talk about the aesthetics Dead. of the char. And and I, again, I'm, I'm, I have to come at this as a person who personally prefers humans. So you have to excuse me, but. 
I think the as oh you racist. What the these hell? These are are interesting in that they kind of fulfill um, the WoW esque and them the the Norn as well. The WoW esque kind of element of the Guild Wars two races. Mm, there's giant armor. cats in World of Warcraft. Well, no, giant but cows. their armor is they no armor is all oh, chunky right. with spikes. Yeah. That's how I think of WoW. Oh. Um, like if 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 you really it tells you what I think of WoW in general, but if you well, think, that is not inaccurate. Yeah, so like the, their armor is they're big, they're big, they're bigger than humans if you set them to max. They're wider than humans if you set them to max. They're they're, they're cat people, but they're not sleek in like how cats are in real life. They they're very they're not Khajiit. They're they're like giant mm-hmm. monster cats <laughs> with horns. And yeah, tusks. they are. They are pretty much yeah. monsters. Um... Right. If I saw a char running at me, I would be scared. Oh if yeah. I, so if I saw and, a cat and person they run on all fours. Like, oh oh shit, dude. Cat yeah. Because and the running animation running at you, you'd laugh. The char is probably oh, the yeah. coolest running animation like, uh, aside from maybe the Asura, that guy? I would say. Sura has number yeah, one because when but... you stop. As... Well, no, but that's only if you stop. Like it's it's the very it's the most different. You're not running with two feet. Yeah. You're literally yeah. You start running like, on all fours. That was actually again one of the other things that really drew me to the game. Sadly enough, was that running animation. Um, that that running animation and might have been why I spent sixty dollars. It gets kind of old. <laughs> um, but <laughs> at the same time, actually playing it, it feels like the fucking slowest race because of that. Really? Like it's a it's a, so like it's a cool animation. Think, yeah. But it feels so slow. I actually come with opposite. I think when they're moving normally, it feels fucking slow. But when they start like um, I, I, I forgot what he called that. That the the pouncing kind of like leaping forward like a cat um when they start doing that even though the movement speed hasn't changed and that's very important races do not have different movement speeds but even though the movement speed hasn't changed i think that made gave it the fluidity was lacking when you're lumbering around in two feet at least that's what i found i, I well, love I, the I, I, see for me if, if, i don't know why like i was watching the other videos and like they would be running forward for a while and, and then drop on all fours and, and run mine mm-hmm. always ran on all fours it, it never. It was. It started okay. on two legs when it stood there. That yeah, I don't. It. I don't know how to make it not run on all fours. Oh right, no, I, I definitely uh, didn't have that. You I, have a weapon. Yeah, out. I think. Oh, well, okay. in combat, you always are on two feet. Um, okay. So and you still run the same speed. And I, I think that's the biggest problem. I think. I think. I think that is the issue. Is that like, like for instance, in WoW, uh, when they introduced the worgen, uh, they decided not to give them a racial mount. Noob, your mic is, is going nuts. <laughs> oh yes. my god! Yeah, go um, when they. Uh, Introduced the work and they decided not to give them a racial mount and instead gave them a, you know, basically a buff called Running Wild that made them drop on all fours and run. But it was an increased run speed, therefore it looked okay. Whereas with the with the char, you're running on all fours at the same speed that everyone else is running on two feet. And it just yeah. it makes it look and feel extremely, extremely slow and just very plodding and sluggish. Right. And it's I didn't I, again, this all comes to personal preference. So, so we'll move on the, from that point. But I, I, I personally did don't agree. I, I th- felt thought it felt really fluid, especially when you dodge in that running animation. I think it looks fucking badass. Like going from all fours run to a dodge, which kind of like shoulder roll forward. I thought it looks cool. Anyway, um, how do you feel, uh, Duran and Rawson specifically, about the char armors? Because I personally I fucking hate them. But again, I'm trying to look at this as someone who might like the WoW esque, spiky, big, badass looking armor. How do you guys feel about that kind of stuff? Uh, well, first uh, off, I, I don't like the WoW spiky, big, gigantic, huge shoulder <laughs> armor. Don't make assumptions, man. That's yeah. mean. Don't make, you know the, what they say about assumptions? You make a dick out of you <laughs> and the, your uh, sister. Yes, yes, and your and sister. Your sister. Um, the the <laughs> the, Gus, good news, the, good the news. issue I think the biggest issue I think with their armor, aside from all the spikes and the giant shoulders, uh, which the giant shoulders thing is definitely I, I think curbing oh. from WoW. Um, but the biggest issue I think is a very similar issue that WoW has run into with the Worgen class. Uh, very, very similar. Are you talking about shoulder? Pads? No, 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 very similar yeah. classes in design. But the the issue that they both run into is trying to create a helm that works on that head. Because you oh, have a yeah, very irregularly shaped mm-hmm. head that is more of a, uh, you know, it's, it's forward facing and doesn't have a proper neck. And so yeah. trying to put a helmet on that just looks and, weird. And, and there's horns yeah. sticking out of it, too. Mm-hmm. Don't yeah, yeah. That. Well, you just put um, on what, what um, I remember I bought the horse armor DLC for Oblivion. <laughs> All right. Why thought, would you buy it? I remembered, with this? for some reason, gee whiz, this horse armor DLC would work really well 
because they have like horses, like forward facing heads. Right. If it was similar to a horse, I thought it would work pretty well. Oh well, okay. So the char armor is the, especially when talking about the helms is an interesting point because char have one of the coolest. Um, by I, I think actually the coolest racial uh, creation, except for maybe the Silvari, which with the which has the glow. The problem with the Silvari is the glow and like I'm talking about the, the bioluminescence is negated by wearing. Armor. Yeah, and, and the fact that their bodies have, have really cool facets to them, like they're made of leaves. So if you actually have no clothes on, it looks really badass. But when you put armor on it, you can't see it. Especially when you look at the Char and their character I'm creator. Badass when I'm naked. <laughs> yeah, uh, streaking is illegal. Um, when when you, when you when you when you are a Char and you create a character. All, most of that stuff is actually quite apparent when you actually go to the final game. A, because they do have armor that doesn't look like fucking human's armor. Um, but B, like things are changing stuff like the, the fur, the fur color you have. The, the, you have. You can have spotted fur, you can have whatever. And that actually, there's enough elements of the armor that le- are left uncovered that you can that follows through. And one of the things there is the horns. So Char, if again you want someone who looks badass, is probably the way to go because you have fucking crazy horn options you can you can, you can re- look pretty cool i think a bunch of them look pretty kind of ferocious but what do you guys think it sounds lame but it's true it, it, it's actually you can make a really damn cool looking char really badass looking char even yeah. though i prefer small horn no horn i, I horn absolutely character. agree with that I, like I, you can make really badass looking i dress good i i my char was a mesmer so i dressed him up in like hot pink and purple and I made him super ugly as well. <laughs> you can make an ugly char. It's pretty cool. Yeah, you, you definitely can make him fucking ugly. Yeah, like he had which, which I like. Face and stuff like that. And and meanwhile, as he's doing all that, he's shooting out like purple lightning bolts and, and butterflies <laughs> and stuff. Yeah, so you can do really cool so things. So you it. can make a really you can make a really badass Char Mesmer who just doesn't give a shit. <laughs> and that's what I really like about it. Like, I think they really do have probably the best character creator. And so many options in terms of... you can When you make a small Char, they look really scrawny and tiny. But when you make a massive Char, because you do have... You don't have, you can't make them fat, but you do have like this general character bigness uh, modifiers. That you, you can make them look really powerful and huge. Which is, which is kind of cool for those out there who want to look for that stuff. Um, but when it comes to the horns, a big problem we were talking about earlier, a lot of the masks, it's kind of the same thing with the Savari. You kind of want to hide your helm as a char because yeah, it really does. Much. Yeah, it, it breaks immersion in a lot of ways because if you have horns that are a different direction than the horns on the mask, then it takes the horns on the mask, which are, which don't look like natural horns. They're usually like spikes or whatever, but like a lot of the char heads like really just entirely remove your horns. It's just so kind of I- weird. I will say at least they they put in enough thought to do that, like where you know the, mm-hmm. the horns on there they would replace them or whatever the case might be, as opposed to a game like WoW where they're just like, ah, eh, well, we'll just let it clip through; it'd be fine. <laughs> just clip it through. I mean, okay. I, I know this is a solid, you know, gold helmet or something, <laughs> but his ears can clip through. You know, those spikes, it's, it's fine. It look okay. Right. It's, it's just, easier this look, way. It's, just, it's a very, it's a very, very exact cut. Yes. That. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so that's that's the one thing about the aesthetics that I don't really care for, aside from the armor. Again, if you like that kind of big, ferocious-looking armor, it's probably for you. Not really for me. But, um, okay, so aside from the char, then we come to the actual... the. The play, the playability of their starting area, and I think they do a pretty cool job. Um, I quite like the char starting yeah. area. Yeah, like I, I played as human. I stayed, I spent quite a bit of time in this char starting area. Yeah, much more than the Norse starting area, in my opinion. Exactly. Um, um, the char starting area, I think, is pretty much almost as polished as the humans in terms of you definitely do yeah. are moved around really well through that area, and you do see a lot of different things. Um, yeah, that was good flow. Yeah, that was really good flow. What, what do you guys think? Like, um, Rawson, you spent some some of your first time with the char. How, how do you feel about the flow of the starting area? Like I just said, it was really good. <laughs> <laughs> but, did you feel like you're doing different things the entire time, though? Like, that's one of, the, one of my main criticisms. Um, but... mm, there was enough variety that I found myself reasonably entertained. Right. Um, you know, like like one of the first ones, uh, one of the first sets of events you'll find is you know going up against this this big giant like fire shaman boss dude yeah. who requires a shit ton of people to get work in and kill him, and you're like level two or three at that <laughs> point. It's really nice. Yeah. Um, and then shortly after that, you know, you're trying to defend these mortar positions from these enemies and so on and so forth. Like the undead stuff can kind of drag a bit because i don't really get that big of a shit about ghosts right. 
And, and the ghosts themselves and, aren't and particularly well done, in my opinion. They just look like yeah, power swapped just, and slightly transparent humans. They don't really look like ghostly, terrifying figures, in my opinion. Yeah. Um. But that's it's really um, good. It's a really interesting point because um, and you kind of tell what you said there because like defending water emplacements or wiping out like some of the fire legion, the the stuff in um noob you're coming through again. The stuff in um the char starting area are very, very interesting in that. When the human starting area, it's all about it. Every starting area kind of has a theme, but the Silvari is all about discovery. For the Asura, it's all about like just wacky science. Um, for the human, it's all about like no, like provincial medieval England kind of thing, right? The Char is kind of like a military encampment, but on a country size scale. You're always doing something different, but it's always very military. Like you are definitely, um, you're harvesting devourer eggs so you can grow more siege devourers, for example, or you're move, or you're picking up, um, this like stuff like sh- sh- discarded shells and stuff or unexploded shells and putting them back in safe areas and, or throwing them at your enemies. Like you're doing very militaristic things. Like, did you guys feel like? Cause for me, that started feeling very samey, but at the same time, you are doing significantly different things, and it's weird that I came off feeling that way. How, how do you guys feel? Like noob, did did you feel have the same feeling? Um, yes. It's weird, right? Because there's yes. way, there's heaps of different yeah. stuff to do, but it feels the same. Um, yeah, that I like going up to the more northern areas. I I found there's a lot more different variety of stuff. Yes. Like you're fighting dredge. And you're fighting not just ghosts the entire time. Right. Um, you're fighting like human rebels too, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but outside of that, it like especially the environment, which looks the same both up north and down south, yeah. which is which is kind of boring. Mm-hmm. It's, it's still ruins. It's still brown. It's it's a lot of more. Yeah. So even though like un- I- unlike humans, where every hill takes you to something a new beautiful vista the char kind of area aside from some elements of going near the great wall where the lighting changes and all that i think the char near the great wall in the char starting area is one of my favorite areas of everything i've seen in Guild Wars too because it's yeah. spectacular how they nailed that but um aside from that like you're doing things that are always militaristic um you're doing very different and very things with very good flow but in my opinion it isn't quite as well it just isn't quite as uh, well put together or continually new feeling as either the Sura or the human just because of like some little bits of lacking here and there in terms of um, just the aesthetics or just the like greater difference differentiating feeling like everything feels more interesting I, there's, not, there's not much more i can say about that like re- really that's my feeling on it Durin, do, do, do you kind of have the same criticisms or where do you come from in that I spent about 20 minutes in the zone and then I got the <laughs> fuck out of there because it felt way oh, too man. Baron's orc to me and I, I went and okay. played something else. You really do not like Char Zone. No, Aww. I didn't. Not at all. I, that, that zone just... Aww. I disliked it even more than Silvario. I will say it did, you know, the what little I played of it, it did flow a little better. Again, I didn't play a ton, but I felt mm-hmm. like it, it did a little bit better of directing you. Um, But it's just, I couldn't I, I I couldn't get myself to stay there any longer. Like brown, if brown there's one thing, I, yeah. If there's one thing I hate more than jungles, it's brown. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, but it's yeah, brown. so that's essentially the positives and negatives of the char. Like I, straight up, personally, again, I'd, I'd go for a sar a sura human. But there are definitely some really cool elements of the char, especially in terms of lore and and their the way they work as a society is really different to the others. Their character designs. If, if you want to see like a lot of a lore heavy thing especially like coming from guild wars one like you want to see what's different and like stuff like Mm -hmm. that char is a good place to start like the what has changed in the world from guild wars one yes and it's really cool because it's 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 not like they make you feel bad about what you did in guild wars one or it's not like they um they hate humans in such a way that it makes you feel weird being a human playing as a as a char they really do nail it in that the char they're a very proud race, especially and, and confident in their own abilities. So it's more along the lines of you find, you see the char side of the conflict and you see the char way of looking at things and approaching things and you can connect with them as a people rather than, than 
like a perhaps so a piece of fiction where you just entirely have a entirely disassociated hey this is how it looks from the other side kind of thing it doesn't feel like that at all it just it feels like it's very contiguous and, and, and fits in really well with the fiction thoughts noob well and yeah. i will say that uh, just really quickly that my negativity with the char is solely based on personal feelings and i i, I would not necessarily dissuade somebody from going char i just personally couldn't do it yeah and <laughs> I, I I may make a char at least just to see that that lore stuff. Even though I'm not too interested in lore in Guild Wars Two, I did have the shivers when I went to that the, that wall. The Great Wall was just amazing. It's like a good before and after comparison. Yeah, like 200 years has passed. What has changed in Tyria? Exactly. And in the Char Zone, a lot has changed. A lot has changed, definitely. Um, so that's that said, Divinity's Reach did come out of nowhere, and that's pretty big. Yeah, I don't know. I know, right? Divinity's Reach is spectacular. Anyway. Does anyone have anything else to add to the char? I think we've hit it pretty well. Um, they would make good fur coats for humans, <laughs> and that's that's about the, all they're good for. So I would recommend it to new people. Just um, perhaps... It, Guild Wars 1 veterans. Guild Wars 1 veterans especially. Um, but for new people, yeah. if you love the aesthetics or the, the type of people the char are, you... That you probably already know. If by you now. are a furry and you like, furred <laughs> let's people, not go there. Let's not go there. You, no. Okay. Let's, yeah. Okay. okay. Um. Well, Ross brought it up before. <laughs> I will say. <laughs> I will say I one plus for the char is they didn't feel the need to give the females boobs. Oh yeah, yeah. they 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 look like they, really they, yeah, they did a good job of making them look feminine without feeling the need to strap on boobs like what like does with awesome. every one of their female races that'd be creepy as hell that'd be absolutely creepy as hell. again like the the char realized as a cat thing race was done really well like just straight up from start to start. the yep. female's amazing they're the way the char moves i feel um is really beautiful or, or for in the way it, it looks awesome like you do look badass at all times um in fact i'd say if you want to be the most badass you could be in guild wars 2 you play a char char warrior and yeah you're there um but yeah just, just in general it's these things are, are like it or hate it I, some people do like the big race maybe the more bestial kind of race than you kind of it seems know. like the most hit or miss race well i was gonna Not say in too, terms like of design but in terms of aesthetics you know. oh in terms yeah, of like yeah yeah I, I will say though if you're looking for like a you know badass guy Another alternative could definitely be a maxed out male Norn warrior. Fuck yeah. And that's where we're going now. So, Rawson, did Segway. you need to tap out? Uh, did you need to tap out? It was a bit too late for you? Uh, yeah, it's, it's getting pretty goddamn late right, for cool. me. Uh, should probably tap yeah. out for now. You, you can just close the mumble or whatever. For now. Come back in 10 minutes. <laughs> plus, it's okay. plus, also, on, plus also, honestly, I, I never played the Norn, so I wouldn't be able to say cool. anything for the. Well, nice right. having you, man. Cheers. Um, all right. Bye-bye. Take Bye-bye. it easy. Sweet dreams, baby. Man, Sweet we're at three dreams. hours. Anyway. Hot. So, well, I, I want to... I- <laughs> I want to do a good job of old races because it's pretty important for someone picking, I guess. And if they want to hear our opinions, oh. here they are. Um, so- Norn are giant clods that are <laughs> basically Neanderthals and they're going to go extinct because <laughs> guess what? Guess what happened to the Neanderthals? <laughs> they went extinct. So uh, I like the way we did it last time. So why wouldn't you two, now that there's only three of us here, um, why wouldn't you two specifically recommend the Norn? I- I'll start with you, noob. What's up? I like populated zones, not oh, like burn. empty wastes <laughs> of nomads. Sick burn. Um, <laughs> it it is just a vast ice, and like living in can living in, it'd be it'd be what it's what people think of Canada, <laughs> like living up north. It's like just tundra. There's no people. So it, it would it would be like, you, like I mean, I, if you wanted to see all that, you would just walk out your front door. Is what you're saying? Um. Well, it's summer now, so there's. It's only like twenty feet of oh, snow, okay, rather okay. than like it's it's not piled up that high. But the, but the thing is, I I understand like the the Norn are like a nomadic race. They don't they don't you know they they don't have cities. They don't have villages. Yeah. They have more like their their small settlements. Mm-hmm. I I do not like that kind of. I I like stuff to be going on with people, like interacting with people of my own race, right. and that seems like the least done in the norn since it's all about you know pride and like doing it on your own yeah well i'll get into that in a bit so Duran, what are are your feelings on it's not just that but i think i think holbrek initially i really liked it because again like it it looks amazing it's one of those places you could screenshot as well pretty easily um but the more i kind of thought about it and, and have thought about it over the course of you know the beta weekends and stuff 
the biggest issue with Holbrook is again, like going back to Noob's point, like I understand they are, you know, a nomadic race. They don't really settle down. And so the fact that Holbrook even exists is kind of counter to the, um, normal for well, the Holbrook is, is more of a gathering yeah, yeah, yeah. place. It's like, a gathering um, hall. but more so what I, what I came to realize is Holbrook is basically just a whole bunch of fucking wasted space. And like everything <laughs> oh, is, everything wow. is, in, well, because everything is incredibly spread out to make it feel big and to feel as yeah. big as like Divinity's Reach and Lion's Arch and stuff. Yeah, but it's yet, huge. like if I want to go from, you know, the, um, the upper like terraces and stuff down to one of the, the, uh, I'm forgetting what they're called. Guild people or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like one of the, the, the three different, uh, houses or whatever, the taverns, um, I, it's gonna be a, this stupid fucking long walk to get down there for no like, reason. Like I understand, like big city, <laughs> big people, but or big people, big city. But it's well, I, I, like I said, I think like, I think a lot of it is more so big. just them trying to make sure that it is as epic and big as like you know Divinity's Reach right. is. But again, sure. it feels just like but a lot of wasted space. It gets in, yeah, right, right. Oh man, I, I like the Norn. I they're I from Guild Wars One. I never thought they were like a great concept. They were just big people. Mm-hmm. That's that's a, it's like big big Vikings or something. Yeah, <laughs> someone pointed out there's a lot of statues. Like yeah, big, like that's that's what takes up their space is there's ice a statues. floating there's a floating uh, oh raven God, that, that that doesn't yeah, make bugs me so <laughs> much. <laughs> oh okay, my God! Magic, like the other ones were what, so cool, and you get to that one and see that it's floating in trees, and it just fucking right. breaks it. Yeah. So this uh, is but no, my, my biggest issue really about the one. My biggest oh, issue can, really is finish. actually with the. Uh, more, it was more so with how the starting zone uh, worked and how the the uh, story quests worked. They yeah. have probably since fixed it because this was Beta Weekend One that I played that, but it was just left such a, ta- a sour taste in my mouth that I just have not no real quick desires to play a Norn. I probably will because I really want a big giant dude with a big giant sword. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's gonna be a while because that was by far the least interesting experience I had in the game. Um, going around f- like around to level 30 or something like that i was on the search for like herbs carrots etc for my cooking mission um so i was just running around looking for herbs and then i came to the realization that everywhere i went it was just snow and hills <laughs> like i i did i think i saw a tree uh. somewhere um a rock maybe <laughs> that was actually that was just an ice statue I, of a rock <laughs> All right, so uh, it just it just lacked it it lacked stuff. It, it, yeah, it like, lacked I, I color like and like things to look at, and, and I mean the things to look at were literally ice statues. And outside of that, like in the zone itself, it just it, you went from like kind of like snowy ish foresty area to straight up big snowy glacier like, area. Uh, lore wise, lore wise, it makes perfect yeah. sense why it's like that, but. As playing a game for, and especially if I'm going to be in that starting zone for a good period of time, I would rather, you know, maybe make the lore a bit flexible and have stuff going on or something like right, that. All right, so yeah. I, I want to rewind for a bit because I want to get into that in the tab. So the Norn, um, again, to, to give you an idea of what the race is all about. Um, well... <sighs> It's hard. To, it's hard to say because again, I'm, I'm a human guy, so I'm gonna have to defend this for, or at least advocate for it. I'll, I'll help yeah, you. Yeah, so can defend. give us what no, the. No, I won't. Let's be well, honest. What are the Norns? The they, they're, they're not the Neanderthals. Um, they might as well be because they're going to go extinct very oh, for soon. Sake. Um, it's it's basically the Norn are a group of very human. They're humans, but no, are they? Human? Okay, so the, the Norn know. are big way, humans. They're giants in aesthetics. They're big humans. They are eight feet tall. They're eight feet tall around. Yeah. On on average. Um, they are they are found in the far north of the Shiver Peak, so like the big mountains in the very north. Yes. They're even way, they were originally from way north, and they are now, but they were forced to move south because of the giant ice dragon Jormag. Yeah. Um, and so their the culture of their people is very like it's very Norse nomad uh, nomad mixed in with Viking. It's it's very much honor and like getting the big kill mm-hmm. and. Any fight is like a good competition or like a sport. You know, for the longest time, they thought dr- the dragon Jormag was like uh, a prey to be hunted or something like that. So they could mount the dragon's head on top of like some sort of house or something like that. Right. Yeah, someone mentioned Norse Klingons. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that's accurate, but that's actually a bit redundant because I think the Klingons were actually. <laughs> they're not angry. I think they're the Klingons not, themselves were angry. actually. Uh, 
loosely based on the well, Nords as well, or the Nords. Nailed it. Right. Um, the thing is, the thing is, um, they're they're very isolated. They they don't really like working together. They're very um, individualist. Yeah. Um, they, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's sums exactly the, the Norn are pretty much hunters. They're hunters. They're a lot of what you'd associate with f- fantastical. Um, you know, representations of the Norse people. So it's it's not how the Norse people actually were, but the no. the the Norn are the people who are very much about um getting into the fight. Like it's almost as if it's almost like um Asgard or, or whatever you you want to name it. The the hall of heroes essentially. Um, everything they do is to be is is such that they can be remembered for all time they're all about yep. um person very proud they're very, they're very proud but a different way than the char the, the char is proud in that they they're, they're proud right. of themselves and their race whereas the norn is about being pride in their achievements like just having right. the most effect on the world around them as a people um so that that's all about like killing the largest beasts or just like uh, Killing the dragons, for example, like straight up, a, lot of, a large way of the, the Norns thinking in this game is to defeat the dragons. Like the Norn really want to be the be all end all. We did the most awesome. I did the most awesome stuff. Look at me. It's it's not to save their own race. It's like just for the sake of killing a dragon. It's kind of, it's kind of both. Yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting because it's well, kind well, of both. In the beginning, it was like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. If, if you read the book um, Edge of Destiny, you can see you can get a lot of insight into the Norn country because it's all about air um, and. And her quest to defeat Jormag because um, the Norn, because they're a very powerful race, they kind of haven't really come to terms with the fact that they have been essentially defeated by Jormag thus far. Um, they were pushed back from their lands. Uh, they, they Jormag um, has this group of followers called the Sons of Svanir. Uh, the weird thing is, and it's interesting seeing that the lore guys in Gil, like the Guild Two lore guys talking about it because it's like um, the Sons of Svanir. Um, worship Jormag, and I'll get to that in a, in a second, but essentially Jormag doesn't give a shit about them, but corrupts them and makes them powerful, um, yeah. and, and it gives them, like, draconic kind of almost, like, powers, like, ice powers. So the those, like, people who started worshipping Jormag have turned against the Norn, and you straight up have Norn being captured and turned into those monsters and sort of thrown back at the Norn. It's very, like, zombie-esque almost. Right, because... Yeah, the Norns are the Norn believe in like the spirits of the wild, yes. which are like ravens, snow wolf, and instead of them, much like the Night Court, they believe in like a different sect or like a cult. Yeah, of it's almost Celtic. Follow it's the dragon. Celtic. Yeah, um, sort of. Yeah, so like the, the, the to, to flesh that out, uh, the Norn like spirituality and culture is all about the bestial spirits. So they have the bear, the wolf, um, what was it, the snow leopard? Yes. And the raven. Um, and so the, yeah. the Norn themselves aspire to the these like ideals which they place in each of these animals. So the bear is all about like power and and overcoming with might. The wolf is about working as a pack. The ravens, um, and I, I forgot what the intelligence. Ravens' intelligence, intelligence yeah. and like yeah, cunning, and cunning. Yeah. Um, but, and the snow leopard is all about stealth and like getting around the problem in different ways. Um, that, those are the kind of ideas. Right, I just got an email. Sorry about that. Um, those are the ideas of the. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. Great email. Great. Anyway, um, so the, the non- what's it from? Was it's, it? It's, was it's from Rawson, which is why I paused in the first place. Um, <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Which is, because he's sending me the the file. Anyway, so the, the, oh, the okay. that's the idea of the Norn. So which is why the when they got pushed back, I think the the their um, words were their gods left them. It's it something like that. Is like the gods no, failed them? I thought that was the humans. No, no, no. no like the actual beasts. There, something happened to the the great spirits. Oh. I, I think they were weakened or something along those lines, or they, their belief was shattered, or their belief was reduced. Again, I'm not an absolute freaking uh, master of the lore of Guild Wars Two, but either ways, the Norn um, are still aspiring towards their their animal gods, essentially. But some elements of the Norn against the, the Sons of Svanir have taken on Jormag as their god. They 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 seek the most powerful in commas of the animal spirits, and they feel that that's the dragon Jormag, which is kind of their background. It's interesting, I guess. I don't think it's as interesting in the Nightmare Court. It's way more interesting than the Centaurs. I'll give you that. Um, yeah. Jesus. Fucking They're attacking centaurs. town, guys. <laughs> there's no, there's not enough backstory for the centaurs. Guys, the centaurs there's attacking a, in the town. There's other elements of Lord, of Norn that are very cool to a very specific type of person. Like, if you like that specific branch I of fantasy. I want to see Norn children. Are there Norn children? I haven't seen Norn children. Yeah, like, how yeah, big they, they are snowball Norn children? fight. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh yeah. really? Okay. Yeah. 
So so are bring they, a human in there. Than I, I don't know. I don't remember if they're big. No, I don't think I, they're as big as my human. But they're bigger than Asura. Oh, what about they're you? Bigger than Asura. Asura. I never yeah, got that. That'd be pretty cool. That'd be fun. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of, it's the Norn as a people is give it or take it. Like if you like that whole um, big, powerful, want to do great yeah. things character, that's the Norn. And personally, it's not the way. I, I mean, as as like the individual Norn, I I don't I quite like them, but just the way they function as a society and how that affects yeah. what you encounter in the game is. I don't know. That has a so like, like personal story wise. I think see. they're a bit on the boring side. Right. It doesn't feel like you're. It's uh, interesting it, because it feels like you're again uh, the the Norn um your personal story person because each of the race we haven't touched on this before but each of the races are has a member of Destiny's Edge which is from the book I, I guess you don't have to read it but it it helps uh, a member of Destiny's Edge that kind of is with them through the personal storyline. How the developers have described it is that um, you kind of meet the member of Destiny's Edge, you become their friend, and then you, through them, you become involved in the dragon conflict. And then at some point, around level 30 or so... You have to unite them together. Well, not, not even. So at some point, level 30 or so, um, they get you involved in the dragon conflict, but then you go off in your own way and you start becoming a leader of the people. Um, at, at, on the side kind of quest kind of thing, uh, you continue the story of destiny's edge to the dungeons from that point on so at the start you're with your person a lot and then you hit level 30 and then you're you kind of only ever see them in the dungeons from then on because you you are again leading people so the person for you in the norn era is air and her she's the one who started the fight against jormag essentially she's the one why can't humans have air they norn could take logan back there. <laughs> so <laughs> She, she, you are possibly the closest to the dragon conflict in inverted commas of Guild Wars 2 because you yes. are directly talking to Air the entire time. Um, the problem is the way they introduce you into that is it doesn't feel like you're being dumped into the dragon conflict. You're kind of doing weird stuff. No. Like you start off by a great hunt. Again, a very Norn thing. Um, fighting a big creature to prove your self-worth. Improving yourself. Yeah. yeah, that's how you start. And then you get into, I, I believe it was like escorting a caravan is one of your second missions. And then... Uh, it lacks importance. You do not feel... Given that it, it doesn't like feel when like you're starting you're, off, you're creating a legend for yourself. It doesn't right, feel like right, you're right. creating much that of a legend. End, yeah, it's it's you're it's too much more of yourself and not benefiting the plot as a whole. Like you don't feel like you're fighting dragons or you're, at least at the start you're helping Norn society. Yeah, because as, yeah, at least at the start. But like as the humans, um, it feels like you're out for it on your own. Exactly. Like as the humans, know. you're defending against like attacks that would take out villages of yeah. people. Like you feel like a hero. Um, right. For the Asura, you're doing really interesting, innovative things and, and, and like experimentation for your like. Trying to be the best for for your race, but at the same time benefiting yourself. your race, yeah. yourself and your race, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. But and and Char, you're benefiting your warband, yeah, exactly. and uh, Silvara, you're benefiting the peltry. Yeah. With Norn, you, I want to be best. I want people to know my. Yeah, name. I want to be no. It's it's it's, it's kind of like the, the, the it's kind of it. like the goth kid, right? He, he wants to be noticed. It, it's it's that's <laughs> this is why I don't personally like the lawn. I have to say, this is all comes to personal like. They do it better than perhaps we are um, saying they do it. Uh, right. It's just that our personal slants it might don't be just, that way. We're way too deep. Like I, I'm just getting nitpicky because it's one in the morning. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. That. So, uh, but that's that's the norm of the spirit as a culture that they're very individualistic. Um, again, that that becomes a reflection upon their major city. The, the city itself is fine. Like you can get everything you need done pretty easily by going to one of the major like this is called the great hall where the merchants are there there's, there's, there's armor crafters in fact i think it's one of the easiest places to get the early level good armor um but at the same time it's very empty it's very barren because the city isn't a city of small houses again the norms are nomadic so their big city is just like five or six big buildings and that's it right. and then and then like you see one house every 500 miles <laughs> or like one house per zone yeah what, I, I, like yeah that. exactly almost like three houses it's like they live underground or something who the hell knows because <laughs> i haven't seen it's many so norn spread running out. around um it's like the it makes me think there are like a thousand norn in the world yeah, well there might be like we don't I really don't know. know because yeah, like for example but i would assume um Ke i believe it was um Tarkin who really likes the norn in, in a lot of ways um said this the norn idea of sending a um elite force to take on the destroyers 
Inca was one. Was just well, there were th- three, <laughs> or was it five? I don't. It remember. was a small. All number. I remember is they died, and I got angry. Oh, I didn't know that part. Anyway, there was a small number. Like the Norn are small in number, but very powerful. They they. No, they don't die in the story. They just die in the mission. They revive at the end of the cutscene. Oh right, yeah, okay. So yeah, again, the, the the Norn are very big and powerful, um, in terms of like just lore. I, I oh. So the the re- the really again, if, if you're all about the Norse, like again, if you like the snow capped mountains look, um, you like the very because I think you guys are forgetting the start. The first area is grassy. It is um a very sparse kind of foresty kind of area, which I actually think kind of cool. I actually like that forest more than I do the Silvara or Asura one because I like the whole wo- like. It, cold like temp- snowy snow- woodlands, snowy woodlands. Yeah. it looks beautiful in my opinion but then you move on to the north even further and it just becomes fucking yeah, snow just frozen desolate tundra it, tundra yeah. tundra yeah not fun um, and, then, and exactly. that's the area you're gonna spend it's like the, the most crystal time desert in. without anything well, that all comes down snow. to personal preference like do you do you like like a human kind of area which is i like snowy maps i always preferred eye of the north areas right. but that's because eye of the north had terrain yeah stuff. Well, like there were cliffs and it wouldn't this just is. It wouldn't be so bad if you weren't oh. spending so many levels there. Yeah, right. you're going to spend a lot of time in that zone, and that's going to get old really quick. There's just not enough interesting stuff to look at. I, in I that don't zone. know. It like, again, it like, doesn't seem to I, change. Throughout, see it. The, the combat. So this is all we're talking. I, I believe we're talking aesthetically. Um, but in yeah. my opinion, I think Silent Dante in the chat it totally agrees with me, which I, which I think is awesome. The Norn actually have, and I'll move this over to gameplay. The Norn actually have probably the coolest set of star, except for maybe is the Sura, the, the, the coolest set of um, starting dynamic events and heart quests. I think the Norn is what you go towards. If you want the greatest amount of diversity in your starting experience from a gameplay perspective, but don't mind the aesthetic perspective. I, I'll put that out there. I, I just re- found myself fighting a lot of dredge. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's kind of cool. I mean, like for some element, you're fighting the dredge, but then you also find the sons of Swanier, and then on the, on the side of that, you turn it into a fucking leopard to to um, hunt as a leopard would, and or you can um, like do challenges in terms of like um, was it riddles to do the raven stuff, or you're feeding the little adorable berry bear baby bears for the bear stuff. Like it, it, there's actually a lot of really great diversity there. There's the um, rabbit quests on in the mountains, which I talked about earlier in one of our very first podcasts, which is like um the for the rabbit spirit inverted commas, which is you know one of the weirder <laughs> spirits in the Norn culture, but um you just like doing these interesting mini games then there's um keg brawl which we never got to try and looks yeah, really cool looks really cool yeah, but there's a bunch cool. of like really crazy really great um differences and, and like uh just the uniqueness in the norn starting area just in terms of dynamic events and heart quests i think you actually do really cool different stuff and i i love it i, I loved it when i did it i would just do it as a human that's my argument <laughs> I, i'd go there as a different race to experience that stuff but it, yeah that's that's how i experience the majority of the norn area yeah and the jackalope high fives aren't that eh? yeah I, I agree i don't want to ruin that one but it's it's really cool. there's like, some really damn cool stuff in the norn starting area um, the snowball fight was pretty good because i got to throw snowballs at kids yeah and exactly. knock them on their asses like that was an freaking okay. bears attack you get a bear attack it's crazy you're attacked by a horde of bears i thought it was really cool I, I, all right you I, might have again, turned me around a little bit on the norn i forgot some of these yeah cool the, stuff the norn they had. is great. the norn was, was an interesting zone because i it wasn't something i really played through much like i played that that initial woodsy area um but like the the next zone the more icy tundra zone um i i I, I See, kind of went in and out of that place over the, over the course of the beta weekends, kind of right. just playing with gillies and stuff. So I didn't mm-hmm. really experience it all the way through. So a lot of these I things I didn't problem. actually see. Exactly, because the ice area has two of the coolest early level boss fights that you have. Like you have the Frozen Crawl Creek boss fight, which is still my favorite um, 10 to level 1 to 15 level like big group boss fights, which is crazy to say that because what other game has huge, gigantic, dynamic boss fights that you have in the world. But anyway, um, you have Frozen Frog Creek and then to, to north of there, I didn't even think there was going to be two, but to the north of there, there's another one, um, which is... I forgot what his name is, but in the Savania camp, there's this like, huge like brutish dude who like char- has charge attacks and stuff. Oh, Bob the Savania? There's a huge brutish dude that has like charge attacks and stuff that um <laughs> that, that, that is really hard to take down, especially if you're melee. Like there's a really cool um 
especially in terms of gameplay and how you have to approach those bosses, you actually have to do really different and interesting and cool stuff to fight them, which which is wonderful in the Norn area. But and you also have like this weird quest where this hut in the middle of nowhere is being attacked by like hundreds and hundreds of worms. Not not, not like geez, little worms, I'm talking like these big frost worm kind of things. So like you literally have these dudes standing out at the front of this doorway holding off like tens and tens of worms, like just like fucking huge things. And everything's huge in scale because you're fucking Norn. Like if I was doing that as a sewer, I just can't wait to do that as a sewer because you'd be <laughs> tiny compared to these things. But um, these gigantic, like just like fucking wailing through them and, the, and people are dying because it's not easy. Like the Norn area is probably the most difficult now that they've nerfed the char a bit, um, area of them. And, and that's another good reason they, to do it. They, it really does teach you the They did nerf really the well. Norn area too. Did they? Uh, yes, they did. Um, at least uh, I know. I know they went through and they they that was actually one of the zones uh, that they pointed out in particular. Um, that when they went through and did the kind of pass on these starting zones in terms of um, like helping the lead players through and and difficulty setting, right. like that was one they really pointed out that they made some massive changes to because players were really really struggling with that zone a lot. Yeah, and and I'd actually kind of find that pretty sad because I, I've not I me because that, I, I'm I'm glad because that means I'll actually go back and play it because if it was stayed the way it was, I would had no interest oh, in going back to that zone again. It was so good before. Oh my god. My yeah, issue no, so with the personal story stuff and and with melee being oh, yeah. broken like it was. So again, yeah, like mine's no, very definitely. outdated information. For for me, it was uh, the dynamic events there can get really difficult. Again, the boss of Frozen Fell Creek, I did it with forty people at level I think it was eleven, and that was like a proper hardcore twenty minute to thirty minute long boss fight, and that was badass. But then I did it again recently with ten people, and so it could have been an element of scaling. That's what I put it towards. But maybe they just made them easier. But we took them out like ten to fifteen minutes. So. Maybe they have changed it a bit, but again, it's still a, a pretty hardcore boss fight in level 10 area and probably one of the more interesting ones, especially with the area effects he does and like the different things you have to do just in that one dynamic event. You have to close like hell portals and stuff. It's very interesting, diverse stuff in the Norn area, which is weird because you look at the terrain for one thing and you see something very samey, but then when you actually start doing the Norn area, it's, it actually has a lot of diversity to it. So uh, there's definitely an argument for it. And again, it all comes back to... The Norn aesthetic is hit or miss. Again, you can do all of the stuff, the Sura starting area, human starting area, Silvara starting area, as any of the races at, from level two onwards. So I guess it comes down to if you want to, if you're a, a RPer who really wants to stick to the area and you have like an identification with the with the Norse kind of feeling of the Norn, then definitely I'd recommend the Norn for you. Uh, they, they are a pretty class act if you, if you take them holistically rather than just like some of the definitely lacking smaller parts of them. Um, any elements there? Nor like... Not enough centaurs. Not enough centaurs. <laughs> so I think I'm telling you, just like the Neanderthals died out, the Norn and they're going to do the same. It's going to be Homo. So I think after three and a half hours, we can pretty much uh, safely say. I think we've decided that human. there is not a bad race or starting zone really in this yeah. game. Like yeah. that's kind of what we decided. Like, but the best this initially one. started out as we, we were. We have to decide. Well, which that's the thing. Like the we, we initially one. started off <laughs> with this question. as like a you know supposed to be a debate of like well I think this one's better well I think that one's better what, re- what it really comes down to is from a zone standpoint and from a race standpoint even in a lot of cases aside from some people's um, feelings Personal on the aesthetics yeah. um, they all are pretty solid and that's more than I can say again for yeah. a lot of MMOs yeah it's pretty great and I, I, I want to touch a little bit on aesthetics before we end I'm sorry we couldn't get to use a feedback oh we wanted to talk about um it was the Arden Guild was two and Crafting Guild was two, but we're at three and a half hours here. So I'll just do this last part before leaving. I do have to note that Norn, when you're looking at armors, you're kind of just looking at human armors made whiter. Thoughts? And big. Uh, <laughs> well, it does have some sort of like a Norse feel to it. It, it does. Well, the racial like, armor is cool. fit in the with. Well, and cool. and I, I will say, having played WoW, where they are notorious for their. Their method of um, modeling armor for classes is they start off with the humans, and then they Looks literally like anyway, st- yeah. they, they literally stretch and they no they straight up do, and then they just stretch <laughs> and condense it to fit whatever uh, race they're going to put it onto next. Like that's how they do right. their armor. That's why when you look at, like the gnomes or in a lot of cases the goblins, but especially the gnomes, everything just looks very squished. Like the textures themselves look very squished oh, wow, because okay. they, they they don't they don't actually remodel it for those those races. Um, that's right. one thing I will say for ArenaNet is they do for every single race. 
they model it yeah. to fit on that body and and that's yeah but the thing it's like artistically they're they're the same i would artistically say. yeah well, like you, you put a piece of armor on a norn and you put it on a an asurin and for the pretty much for the most part they're gonna look like the same piece of armor it's interesting because yeah. for well that one i'll disagree with because the asurin one looks will look adorable Anyway, um, <laughs> well, that's just because the sure are <laughs> the Norin. It's interesting because you're right in that they do remodel it for the shape of the Norin, and what, what you end up having there is that the Char, for example, they're big. They're, we're talking about the two big races now. The Char, for example, um, when you make a skinny small Char, they look like a skinny and small thing. Like they're still about the size of a human. A Norin, the smallest you can make a Norin in terms of height is still taller than a human at maximum height. And the, the narrowest you can make them is still about as narrow as a buff human. Like, so Norn never really have the element of some of their armor looking weird or creaky on a small size Norn. You always have this like big buff kind of like strong looking look for all the armor. Yep. Um, so what you have there is even though the, a lot of the armor looks like the human variant of the armor, because of just the basic difference in proportion. You look like different. Yeah, you look yeah. pretty different, but. That said, beyond the racial armor, you still kind of look like... Because Char or Asura are a significant remodel, whereas a Silvari and Norn are a smaller remodel from the humans. You still kind of look like a hum- like a big fucking human, I guess. That's what I'm saying. Human, it's the way to go. Everything's based around <laughs> the human. So, well... The, the sun revolves around the humans. Um, Let's just say that. Oh, yeah, but again, the racial armor, they look cool. Like, you get pelts and that kind of stuff. It looks pretty badass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Norn racial really armor nice. is really cool. Yeah. So, uh, we'll round this out. Um, so, what what do you guys? What what are we rolling for release? So I, I know I'm going to be making an Asura and a human, definitely. Human, 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 <laughs> human, 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 uh, human. I'm going to be having an Asura for my main, and then uh, in case you didn't hear that, it was human. It was human. Asura for my main, and then probably uh, I think no, Silvari got knocked out. So, uh, oh, I, I should say. Thief got knocked out, and that was going to be my Silvari. Uh, so oh, okay. it would probably be uh, Asura, human, 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 and Asura. Human, 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 human <laughs> dude. Human, human, human. Well, because the warrior has to be human. Asura because it's going to be a great sword warrior. And I, I think a lot comes down to the animations, and at least for me, because I know that if I make an Asura for all my alts, I will continue to love them beyond just the initial characterization and wonder of playing a new race and class because like straight up the animations are always hilarious slash adorable always I, they'll, they'll probably never i'll never get over them because they're really well done like the, you say that now dude, but in a couple of that months doing a black flip like oh doing God, a back flip on a dog crush their heads with my feet Doing a backflick on a dodge is pretty much, <laughs> yeah, it's it's really, it is really cool. Like, I, I just love the little things they've done with the Asura. So I personally, I can see a lot of my ults being Asura, but I'll probably make one of each of the races just so just so I can have one, I, I, I guess, pretty much. Beyond that, we don't know what Rosen's doing, but hey, let us know. if Did we do a poor job of this? I think we've hit pretty much all the major notes and why you'd pick any so, races. I hope I, you did a good job with that. I, I will say right well, now... You have to decide which one's human. the best because this, that was <laughs> the question. Human. 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 Yeah. Human. Yeah. human. I mean, from a, start, from a starting second. from a starting standpoint, a starting uh, zone standpoint, human. From a racial standpoint, a certain. I do um, both no. human and Asura second place very closely human. on both human. points. I, I love <laughs> the humans. Uh, but what I will if say I is... an ugly, fat, shitty human... Uh, they'd be perfect. Oh, someone someone told us we forgot to cover racial. Oh, we're already at three and a okay. half hours. Should we really do that at this point? All right, well, let's I'll go say back. one let's thing. Go back. All right. um, racial skills let's, let's have no effect again. on structured PvP. Um, nope. Th- most of them are weaker than their class equivalents. They're not very good skills. Except yeah. every all of them are pretty crappy, except for one, which is the Silvari root. Um, which is... Oh, no, sorry, two. There's the Char... Uh, no, three. <laughs> there's the, there's, Jesus Christ! Get okay, there's the char mind. one which summons a uh, like a, a a volley onto the area or like an artillery strike onto the area in front of you, which is really great at low levels. Um, there's a char one which is great at all levels, which is like a a it's, it's pretty much a shout, but doesn't classify as a shout, so it's not affected by the same traits. That gives might to all your nearby allies, which is fantastic. Um, and there's the sewer one which roots your enemy, which is probably the most broken of them, especially in World vs. World. Um, so not no sewer, the Silvari one, which is. 
there's a difference between roots and immobilize. Roots um, come up between at a character's legs, stops them from moving and turning, just like immobilize. But they have to destroy the roots in order to keep moving again, as opposed to using a stun break or a um, condition removal like you would immobilize. So rangers have one as as part of their elites. And that gives you an idea of how good a root is. But Silvari gets one as a racial skill. So for world versus world, and um, definitely general PvE, if you have single targets as your major problem, Silvari is probably the most powerful race to pick at the moment. Oddly enough, unless they tone that skill down. But Bachar is a very close second. Um, that's, but that's, again, these are very small. In most cases, all this is normalized by your... Um, class like for example the humans have pretty cool thing called the hounds of balthazar which which summon three hounds and attack your enemies but that's not as good as for example taking something like rampage or and plus that's an battle elite. standard yeah, yeah exactly like, it's just the racial skills are good but in general you're looking at your class skills except for those three i really uh, pretty much i named that's that now, that's racial skills um anything else guys i think we hit that uh, pretty decently um we yeah no. i, I I apologize, what, what, we can't get to use the questions or anything like that. But. What I was going to say is, um, for anybody who's been asking for a lore podcast, that's probably the closest we're going to get, because that went pretty pretty deep into it racial decent. lore. It went okay. And, and more so, I, I think... We could do more in the future. And more so, I think, than, than we, we should really do specific. in a podcast, because... Yeah. Well, we're not good enough. Lore lovers are... <laughs> well, and, and that, that and lore lovers, yeah. lore lovers really are a minority in MMOs, so to dedicate a podcast to it... Uh, not a lot of people want to listen to that. So yeah. again, like for those for those who did want to listen to it, like that's probably the closest we're going to get in a normal podcast. Maybe we'll do like a special. Yeah, episode. like, yeah, like there could be like there could totally be like a episode. lore special, but as a regular normal podcast, there there is your lore podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, and with that, uh, plugs for the day. Nubaram, I'll start with you first this time. What's up? I need to go to the bathroom. So um, that's my plug. <laughs> yeah, check out the Giant Bomb PC Gaming Hub for a Giant Bomb PC game. <laughs> Thank you for um, doing my plug. You can check them out on giantbomb.com. Oh, oh and, and my guild. And my guild. My human centric guild. Oh, I'll make it sometime in release when I remember it. It's Cerberus. You have to be a human. If you're not human, I'll find you and do something to you. I don't know. That's sounds threatening. I'm tired. I'm yeah, tired. I, 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 I'm tired. yeah, so that's Giant Bomb PC Gaming Hub and you also have the Mumble, so you can check them out there. They're pretty cool. They're pretty cool guys. I don't really frequent them too much anymore. Sure. But, but. C-R- C-E-R-B. Um, sure. And Duran, plug? Uh, I swear I'm going to start streaming again. I, I keep plugging the stream <laughs> and then I don't This is your stream. channel. Well, part, part of the, the issue has been lately is we keep getting these kind of impromptu stress tests and that combined with I'm also, you know, kind of prepping for a move and a child's birthday party. I've been really busy the last week or so. Um, but yeah, this, this channel, uh, twitch.tv slash Duran, I do plan on streaming again. Uh, <laughs> I, I think the next game we're going to hop into is going to be uh, the on, on, on Rain Slick Precipice of Darkness uh, Pinarcade Adventure. Oh, that one. could be cool. I'm up, um, I'm up for that. That's, that's pretty awesome. Oh. Oh, I got that for like four or yeah. two dollars. Oh wait, wait, wait! Do episode. One. I thought you meant the uh, do the new one. Do the RPG. It looks cool. I, I'm I'm gonna do all of them, but I'm, I, uh, I haven't played okay. any of them. So right. starting That's with the also valid. Uh, That's they're also not very valid. long, so it, it probably won't take too long to get to that third one anyway. We um, do need pictures of those cupcakes. I, I'm just talking about yeah, chat now. Okay, send me. I will, a I will take email. pictures of. I will take pictures of the cupcakes and and send oh, Nubron. Don't I'll take pictures of post cakes and pictures. No, I will not send him pictures. Uh, but I'll post them in the thread for pictures of <laughs> pictures of your nephew. I'll post them Come in the on. thread for the, for next week's podcast. <laughs> Yay! Yes. And it's people great. remind him it's if you delicious. want to see them. Looks delicious. There's Cookie Monster pop cupcakes. Sound freaking cool. Anyway, um, <laughs> so this is our yeah. first live show. If you haven't checked us out live, we're doing we're going to be doing this every week. Um, not on the Sunday like we're doing right now, but on sorry Saturday, I guess American time like we're doing right now. But on Friday nights, um, 9 p.m. Eastern, every Friday. 9.15 if you like that. Yeah, that's probably, probably more accurate. Um, so every Friday night, we'll be doing this. It's going to be three hours each time, but if you want to check out some Guild Wars 2 on your Friday nights, here we are. Um, otherwise, uh, that's twitch.tv forward slash Durin. Uh, I'll, be, I'll be posting that in the show notes. Also, you can email us at thelinkycast at gmail.com for your Although, feedback. We had some great feedback last week. What's up? Just what I was going to say real quickly, um, if you are watching live now um, or are even listening to the archive um, later and you want to catch the next one live, you can head over to that channel and hit the follow button and you'll actually get an email when we go live letting you know so you don't have to just hang out waiting, hoping it'll happen or whatever. Yeah. 
Yeah, and and definitely check out the forums at giantbomb.com for uh, the Guild Wars 2 forums. You can search it, Giant Bomb Guild Wars 2, you'll find the forums there. That's where our guild is, and yes, you can join if you have that question. Um, but we'll also be posting there for updates when we'll go live, that kind of stuff. So thanks for joining us. Um, this has been the Lincoln Cast, episode 16. Next week is the last one before release, guys. That's crazy. Oh, crap. Oh, oh man. Dude, what are we going to talk about? Bad, man. Anyway, with that. Oh, well, I guess we'll figure that out on the day of <laughs> yeah. when we're doing the podcast around 8 o'clock. Goodbye. Right. <laughs> Later. Goodbye. Goodbye.